just smoked another to the face, yeah, 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 yeah. She wanna stay. Singing to your bitch like I was Drake, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't just try to tell me you love me. You can't keep it real if you really don't trust me. Come with a real, you hear been a front, so you get my meals. I'm gonna for the money, money in the bank. Come with a dank, scroll in a tank, rolling with the gang. You sitting out on the sideline, trip, I go to the hole with the rock like Pippin. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay. What up, dog? Welcome to the World of Heavyweights. I'm your boy, Easy, joined by my man, Spinmo Rex. What up, dog? Yo, young sus in the TV booth. JB Smooth on the ones and twos. I'm rocking along on a Thursday. Detroit Pistons. I'm starting off the rip. I'm pumped, bro. I, I am, too. Yeah. I was watching. I watched the whole game. They started off pretty slow. It got ugly there in the beginning. Yeah. But the Pistons rallied back. And they gave fans something to be excited about. They gave fans what they wanted to see. The young guys went out there, played very well. We're going to get into it, obviously, deeper as the show goes on. But 100%. That guy, Jalen Duran, is a problem, man. He's a problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My, uh, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. I, I want to spill all the beans. And I know, the show. Yeah, 100%. If you, it's an inside joke. Every time everyone tries to talk sports before the show, I scream to them, save it for the show. I mean, why not? It's valuable conversation. That's yes. what we do. Um, first and foremost, I already did a first, I guess. So secondly, I like to wish my guy Jeff I. Freddy a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Jeff Jeff Freddy. 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 Happy birthday, brother. Hundred percent. And you know, looking forward to Sauce's half birthday next week. Yeah. I, I got your invitation <laughs> in the mail. I heard it's gonna be goodie bags and, and all that good stuff. <laughs> your mom's fighting us all over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it gonna be a bounce house? <laughs> yes, <yeah. laughs> my mom can drop you guys off if your mom can drop. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, bet. My mom can pick us up easy, and Sus's mom can drop us off whatever. If I had to pick, and no offense, you know I love you, my guy. If I had to pick one grown man to ha- like celebrate a half birthday, it would be Sus. <laughs> no, it definitely be Sus. <laughs> that's, that's pretty fair. That's pretty fair. I don't even know what my half birthday is. I feel like that's very unfair because I I don't even make a big deal out of my birthday. Like I'm one of those people, like the not like grouchy on your birthday, but just like oh, it's another, it's another day type thing. Yeah, yeah. I also like just don't take like uh, it sounds weird, but I don't take attention or compliments well. I just it's always like awkward. I don't even know what to say back. You're very handsome. Yeah, like Jesus. No God. (laughs) Why? So (laughs) sus. Yeah, so sus. Suss it up. No, I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't take them. Take them well. But uh, happy birthday, Jeff Fire Freddy. Did we have a graphic for the Detroit Red Wings jerseys? No, we don't. No, we, we don't. don't. There, if, should, there's pictures saved in the in the downloads though. I grabbed it for BDE. If okay. You want. Throw yeah, those I'll, up real I'll, quick. I'll throw. I'll go through. Not that. gonna lie, to you, I don't mind them. I don't mind them either. I don't mind them. They've at been all. getting a lot. I'd, I'd rock one. Yeah. Not gonna lie. They've been getting a lot of hate. People, fans, inside the organization. Inside the organization? No, oh, 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 geez. <laughs> yeah, my sources tell me. No, it's everybody inside. I've seen everybody inside the organization, like Ken Cal, you know, Max Boltman, what they Carly saying? Johnson, Daniela Bruce. They all love them. And I, I like them. I think yeah. they look good. It's, it's not like it's like yeah. replacing the PBA, original. Yeah, dude, that's what pisses me off when people, no, you can't do it. You can't mess with those jerseys, man. It's yeah. Like, they're wearing them for like five games, yeah. maybe. Like the teal, the whole teal situation. Yeah. It's like, calm down. You I'm know, with you. They're, they're going to wear them for a tenth of the season, maybe. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it doesn't hurt, bro. It doesn't hurt. I, I, I'm not mad at them. I don't hate them. Uh, Jakob Vrana officially entered. I don't even know what's that, what's that program called for the NHL. I know it's like a player assistance program, pretty much. I'm not going to speculate on what the situation was. These are the Detroit Red Wings, New Jersey, by the way. I think they look pretty sweet. They do look dope. Yeah. I'd rack one of those for sure. <laughs> you know, I like they did, they, like uh, subliminal marketing. They put a urban fella there <laughs> in, the, in the jersey there. That's how they played them. <laughs> Hashtag comps all the time, man. <laughs> I'm about to get one. <laughs> <laughs> I see what they're doing here. I might cop one. I might cop one. I might wear one. I, yeah, I like wearing something different, like. That's why the one jersey I have, hockey jersey, I should say, is it's the it's the classic. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, the winter classic. What's us? Easy. Would you get the Swedish guy as as your as your Red Wings jersey? Oh, I feel like you dude, have they're to. all Swedish now. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For oh, sure. Like, particular, particularly your guy. Yeah, I would, cause like you have to. I called that one out. Yeah, a little, little blindly, a little bit blindly on the call out there, but I put on the tape. Dude looks special. I was like, I was going on BD. I had to learn how to talk to yeah. him hockey. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, yeah. I was watching this guy. He looks sweet. Yeah. 
That was your really Malcolm pretty, Rodriguez pretty of, of NHL. Yeah. I, I, I got to be honest. Oh, man, I should have sent this tweet in for you, too. I called that Duran trade as well. Did yeah. you guys get my, my tweet last yeah. night? Yeah. I was like, yeah, they're going to use these assets. They're going to trade Grant. Because I was like anti-sign DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, you put it in Slack. To, I'll do it. You didn't want him to trade Grant for Ayton. Yeah. He said, I'd rather use those assets and get Jalen Duran. Yep. And I I said it multiple times, and guess what happened? Yeah. They used some assets and got Jalen Duran. Spencer also wanted wanted poop in his Jordans before he wanted DeAndre Ayton. I did. I said I would take dog poop and put it in all my Jordans before we signed and trade for DeAndre Ayton. Poop it out. And And, and, and you wanted to have sex with an old lady that was up there, too? Yeah, yeah. As, uh, yeah, have sex with a 90 year old woman. Um, I think eat a half. Chewed donut out of your mouth was in there. Yeah. There's a couple of them. There's a couple bad ones. Just wasn't the move. And by the way, what did he do last night? I saw he was like limited in action because of foul trouble. He was getting bodied by Christian Wood. Yeah. Bro, that's what you guys want to give a max contract to. Revisiting the Harden situation with it, though. You still yes. oh my God. We want to give that max contract. We did that yesterday. I know, but we got, actually got to see eight in action last night, and eight and got eight up. Yeah. We still want, you still, still you want to give him max? Over to James Harden, yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Full of it, easy. I, I'm not, but we, you know we don't, have to, we don't have to get into that one. Easy just like signing forty year olds. I don't like signing forty year olds. We already had, we already determined like neither of us would want to do either of the situations. Yes, but given if I gun to the head, like I'm taking the guy. I'm one of them on the dotted line right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I gun to the head. I'm taking the guy that's going to at least give me the playoffs, like guaranteed. Yeah. I can't guarantee that with Aiden. You think James Harden would guarantee get you to the playoffs? For sure. La- he missed no. a- last time he missed the playoff was 10 years ago. You also wanted Kevin Durant. Just say you want the Brooklyn Nets to be the Detroit Pistons. That's true. Well, who wouldn't want Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant? I don't understand the Kevin I'll, Durant I mean, slander. I'll take him off the street, yeah. yeah. But you had a lot of Kevin Durant slander, too, yesterday, Spinny, in the group chat. Yeah. Which I, I mean, I, was, I wouldn't say it's slander. I would say it's factual statements. I, I took it as slander. <laughs> that was a Neil Rule statement right there. That that's, was, that that's, was has he won a championship anywhere else? You don't know? No. So that's fine. But I'll tell you I what. deal with facts. He was on the same floor with Steph Curry, and he sunned him. He that was, that was, took over his team. He got the two, the two finals of And MVPs. guess what Steph did without Kevin Durant? He got a ring. Two. Two. Yeah. And what has Kevin Durant done without Steph? Gotten hurt, been in a bad situation with Russell Westbrook, and ha- had other bad situations. Like he, he's not, he's not the greatest of and making decisions. And what has not won a ring? That's all right. That's all right. He literally, God, he literally, ah! literally joined Steph, sunned him, and took over his team. Was the Finals MVP in both those situations? I just, yeah, I mean, when he joined the best team and then the history of basketball, and you're also easy. the best player on that best team. But eh. no, he, he was. It's not. Eh. Steph's better all time. Well, because of the ring. Sure. Because he changed the game. I never got that. I, like... <laughs> what? <laughs> what, what do you, what? What do you mean? I, I get it from the aspect of, like, everybody's, like, trying to shoot threes now. Yes. That's like, what it that's, is. That's, 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 no that's the whole thing. There's no, there's no but. <laughs> yeah. But no, but no one's executing it to the point of, like, Stephen Curry. Damian Lillard is. Trey Young is. Who else? Everybody's trying to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And like, teams as a whole shoot a majority more threes. Yeah. Than they did. Yeah, that just makes sense. I mean, it's literally half more of a point. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's. It, it's kind of stupid that it took people forever to be like, maybe we should go for the more points than we should yeah. the less points. Well, I also understand like the other side of the argument too, right? Is like the easiest shot in the NBA is the closest one of the you know what I'm saying is a layup. So like. There's your efficiency argument, but like you said, I mean, if you got a guy who can shoot, mm-hmm. let him shoot. Let him do it. And by the way, too, as much as Steve Kerr obviously been a part of them winning four rings, Mark Jackson got to get some credit for that situation, oh, he, yeah, too. I mean, he built that team. He yeah, drafted he, he's the one that really let him loose at first. For sure. Absolutely. For yeah. sure. But he couldn't get him over the hump. What? Why? And is it is it the religion thing Ooh, that he's not got picked back up? It's something. I don't know. Do There's, you know what it is, Sus? He's getting blackballed for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, how, does, how does he have that situation going on? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking this earlier, like you you guys remember when Doc Rivers got traded? I'm back. Like they That's traded wild. Doc Rivers. Traded yeah. the coach. Would, I was thinking like hypothetically, obviously it's not going to happen. Uh huh. What coaches would you trade for? See, I'm for I'm, the Pistons. Like I'm, I'd trade for Eric Spolstra. Oh yeah, easy. No, I would trade for Pop, for sure. 
That'd be the one guy. Oh, it's gonna coach what three more years yeah. and then retire. He's out. That's all right. I mean, if that's one guy in like history that I'm, I'm gonna like bring. You on just want to bring guys in for their last year <laughs> and then let them abandon you. <laughs> and you can know you saw the no, I just want to bring in the Easy best guys. He wants everybody that's yeah. dying. You He's know, like, yeah. we watch you. I think we should trade for you, Donis Haslam. <laughs> He's still got some tread left on the tires. Well, no, I'll I've, trade for Eric Spolstra. Yeah, hundred percent. That's a good one. I would trade for Monty Williams. I just coaching in the NBA to me. I'll trade for Ty Lue. I think it's overvalued quite a bit. Like Ty Lue, it's a perfect example too. You know what I'm saying like we you, saw it's it's a talent driven league. Did you see what he did without his talent? Not, when Paul George and Kawhi Leonard didn't play 75 percent of the season, and he still got the Clippers to a four seed in the West. Like that is coaching. That's great well, coaching. They, they that play, is fantastic coaching. Dude, Kawhi hasn't played in 17 months. Yeah. But, I mean, and they've still been. PG played sparringly throughout that season. Some about the bubble? No. It was the, either the year before or after the bubble team. No, I think that was Doc. Doc did that with the Clippers. No. I don't know that Ty Lue did that. It was Ty Lue. I'm going to look it up. I don't. Uh, Doc hasn't been on the Clippers in. Yeah, since CP3. Yeah, since CP3. Doc never had Kawhi on the Clippers. I'm, I'm he had that one year sure. post CP3. No, no, yeah, Doc didn't. Have, no, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like Doc went to the playoffs and like they had no one. No, I'm telling yeah. you, Ty Lue coached them to the playoffs when Kawhi Leonard and Paul George missed a majority of that season. Yeah. I'm looking it up. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm not buying. But it. Spencer, he's talking about that one year with Lou Williams, rookie yeah. Shea. Oh yeah. yeah, that was that was Doc. But, that was Doc. Yeah. But yeah, no. Hold on, I'm looking at the Ty Lue stuff. You guys keep talking among yeah, yourselves. It's, yeah, it's so I I had never I didn't even know that it was a thing. That you could trade yeah. for a coach. And the Clippers traded for Doc Rivers. And that got me thinking, like, yeah. would you trade for anybody? Would you trade for a coach? Yeah. Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse, I would throw on that list. And one that you get for the free ball right now that I really like is Quinn Snyder. Quinn Snyder could get for you could get for the free ball too. I was surprised Quinn Snyder left. Mm. Was that like a Danny Ainge pushed him out kind of thing? I feel like that's what it was, because Quinn Snyder would have got yeah. the most out of that team. I think and they didn't want to win yeah. as many games as Quinn Snyder would help them win. I think it was definitely that, but I think it also was probably Quinn Snyder being like, I could get a better job than this. You know, I don't want to necessarily rebuild. Some coaches are just anti-rebuild, and I feel like maybe he was he was one of them. But it definitely was Danny Ainge, like you know, putting his stamp on Rudy the team. I mean, he, he blew up the he blew up Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell so fast. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. you know, there was that too. In, in our Woodward Sports chat, Bennett WMC says, uh, "Dude from the Celtics, as long as you keep him away from your wife." Yeah. <laughs> Ime Udoka. That, Honestly, he is a good coach. That actually, that would be the yeah. guy. I'm praying to be that. He gets pushed out of Boston, yeah. and we don't have to trade for him. We can just scoop him up like a ground ball. That would actually be the guy. But, no, uh, Ty Lue made the playoffs once with the Clippers, and it was with he had PG and Kawhi. They both play, played 50 games. One played 54, the other one played 52. That doesn't sound right. That does not sound right at all. Well, it's correct. I'm looking at it right now. It's the 2020-2021 season. That's, and that – him – was he the guy who was coaching the Cavs for a little bit when they went to the finals? David they lost Blatt. the David oh, Blatt. Never like, trading for him. <laughs> like I'm not trading for any coach though. It's such a talent-driven yeah. league that like coaching to me is like a bit overvalued. Because the best guy has never done it without talent. The only guy I could point to, and I could say based off coaching and like X's and O's fundamental, my guy Popovich. That's the one I'm making the trade for. Maybe Emi Udoku too, but yeah. Jason Tatum's coming on as well. There was a documentary on Pop that let's just say kind of changed my perspective on him. Well, I still think he's one of the goats, but. What do you uh, mean, like was, a totalitarian type of dude? Or what, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? What do you mean yeah, by that? yeah, it was. I'll send it. I'll send it to you. It was kind of crazy. No, say it now. Everyone's curious. It was just, yeah, it was basically that. That like he really just finds these players that are these European players in particular that like their only shot to stay in the NBA to make money to play basketball. Listen to him. and then he just mind controls them That's and all that. Wicked smart. That's it's called winning, Chris. It's called yeah. winning. Spence, what do you tell us about the SMA for those European players who got the mental abuse from Popovich? SMA, <laughs> or the Sports Marketing Agency, can help you out because they spread awareness about mental health and substance abuse. Their new podcast, This Is The S Word, helps fight the stigma about seeking help. Trust me, I used to work in this field. I know that is a big reason that people refuse to come out and get help because they think they're going to be judged for it. So, if you are struggling or know someone who is, make sure you go check out thesportsma.com to get the help you deserve. We are the Wilbur Heavyweights, and we'll be right back. Wilbur.
Edward Sports is giving you another chance to sit front row, this time at the Detroit versus Green Bay game. Think you have the best Dan Campbell impression? Woodward Sports, let's go. Can you say man with the best of them? I got it. Here's what I need, man. I need you to trust me. I, I swear to God, I'm not a lunatic. I swear to you. Can you say, let's go for it on fourth down? Man, I got a plan. I swear to you. All I think about is you guys. That's all I think about, man. Are you a master motivator? That's all I think about is you guys. Show us in a video. Record your best Dan Campbell impression and post the video on Twitter or Instagram using hashtag Woodward Front Row. We'll select the best three impersonations of Motor City Dan Campbell and send you and a guest to Front Row. So knock the dust off the old sweatpants, wipe some kneecaps, and enter today. <laughs> and as always, go Lions, man! I just need you to trust me, that's all. Please. I don't care if I got a one toe, two butt cheeks, and a, and a, and a rock. <laughs> Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for just $10 a month and get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for just $10 a month. Join today at any of the 50 plus Detroit area locations. What's going on, everybody? It's Spencer for the Fulling Warehouse in Hamtramck. You know it, you've heard of it. It's the home of the original football bowling pin game called Fulling. Two different ways you can play. They've got $12 open unlimited play as well as private lane reservation for $120. If you get thirsty, they have a $2 mystery beer vending machine along with multiple fully loaded bars to choose from. So make sure you go check them out in person in Hamtramck or visit them online at FullingWarehouse.com. What up, though, and welcome back to the World Have You Wakes live on WoodwardSports.com. I'm your boy, Easy Joe, by my man, Spin Moe Rex. What up, though? Young Sus, a.k.a. Chris Pilati, from the TV booth for JB Smooth, the ones and two. JB, you're, you're quiet, that one. Is there a coach you trade for? Has some of these guys overhyped? Uh, Steve Kerr, or can we bring back uh, Phil? Can I get Phil out of retirement? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though, man. Like, I don't, I don't know if they do that stuff with, like, the Pistons roster, like, Phil had Kobe, Shaq, Michael Jordan, Scotty, Rodman, even Steve Kerr. As much as I got, yeah, that's why I'm I, saying I respect Eric Spolstra, from, man. Yeah, but even him. Like once Dude. the Heatles left, I know they went to the finals in the bubble. No, to get to the my thing with every year. my thing with Spolstra, how I knew he was a good coach was I think it was like four or five years ago. Now that one year where they started eleven and thirty. Over their first 41 games, and then the next 41 games, they went 30 and 11. Like they literally just flipped it completely opposite, and that proved to me that he was a good coach. But at the end of the day, easy. You're right. They need talent, but it's not that. It's also coaching too. It's more than just talent. It is, and we appreciate you guys for tapping in. You know, we are live on WoodwardSports.com. Check us out. Make sure you hit up that Woodward Sports chat thread. Now let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to the game. Let's talk about the man. He is him. The rookie, Jalen Duran. Going crazy last night. In 21 minutes, he had 14 I, points, 10 rebounds, and assist. 7 of 13 shooting, 3 blocks, and was plus 7 on the floor. Youngest player in the NBA. Youngest player in the NBA. Look at those stats. The dude's a monster. In Andre Drummond's first game. Actually, I didn't even take his first game. Because he only played like 12 minutes. 12 minutes. In Andre Drummond's first game, where he got 20 plus minutes, which Jalen Duran only had 21, he had 5.7 rebounds, two blocks, 33% shooting on six field goals. It took Andre Drummond 13 games to get his first double double in the NBA. Jalen Duran did it in one. That's one what, hit a quitter. If you guys don't remember, going back to like people, I don't know who did the pro comp. Uh, for Jalen Dern. Somebody compared him to Andre Drummond, and I got, like, heated by it. Cause yeah, I'm like, me too. No way. I, I just gave my reason why. So he looks a lot more fluid. I think he could defend on the perimeter a lot better than that. I think he has – he's more of an athlete. As much as, like, Drummond is a bit of a freak, I think Dern is more of an explosive type athlete. And my pro comparison was Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard. Oh, yeah. We Dwight got some Howard. numbers to back that up. Throw that one up, too. The second youngest player in NBA history to have a double-double in his first career game. The only other one. Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard's first career game. I got the numbers here. 12 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists, and 4 blocks. But that was in 38 minutes. Yes. Jalen Dern cashed in, what, his 14 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 blocks, and 22. 
The guy is insane. The guy is insane. Yeah. He's a man child. He is out there reverting lanes. He's out there scaring people away from going into the paint. You look at what he did when he was on the court opposed to when he's not on the court. When he wasn't on the court, Paulo scoring a will. Wendell Carter scoring a will. These guys are just going in there and doing whatever they want. But when Jalen Duran is on the court, they're scared. And they should be. Because Duran coming. He swats everything. His his length is insane. The way he gets off of the ground so effortlessly yeah. is mind blowing. And Pistons fans should be very excited for Jalen Duran because the Pistons got one. Yep. They pulled the okie doke on the Knicks. They said, "Jane Dolan, yeah. hold one of these, buddy," and we're taking him. And they went there and they took him. And it turns out the guy's ready to go already. Oh, he's gonna spend time in the G League. Oh, he needs to develop an outside shot. Out of here! It's not happening. The kid's ready. Put him in. Start him. Put him in the starting lineup. Like I was so excited with everything I've seen from him. I made jokes on BDE like Jalen Duran's gonna go down as the best center in the history of the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, yeah. it's it's not that crazy. Yard with Bob Lanier, obviously. Bob Lanier is number one. I was just gonna say, yeah. Bob Lanier, fantastic player, multiple time All Star, Hall of Famer. Yeah. George Yardley, boo. Who from from the twenties when they were dribbling like this and, and, <laughs> and doing only chest passes, no bounce passes. Right. They didn't have a three point line. <laughs> I don't care about that. So Bob Lanier is obviously the, what he needs to catch up to. Andre Drummond, he's already better than Andre Drummond. Yeah, I'm sorry, he is. I love I love Draymond. Yeah. He was here, kind of soft. Jalen Dur- Andre Drummond in his rookie year at 19 years old, by the way. Jalen Durant's 18. Yeah. 20.7 minutes per game, 7.9 points, 7.6 rebounds, a block and a half, and a steal. 60% shooting, which is pretty impressive, but it was on six attempts. Jalen Duran can easily beat those stats. He can easily beat seven and seven, eight and seven. If you give him the time, if you put him in the lineup, this kid is going to do some great things. And he did it all without committing a foul. Without committing a foul. That was the biggest thing in preseason. That's the biggest thing when you see rookie big men, young guys. You say, oh, can he do this? Can he stay in the game? Can he not foul? Guess what he did? He went out there and fouled. There didn't foul. He went out there and (laughs) didn't foul. So Pistons fans have the right to be extremely excited about Jalen Dern. This guy is raw. He is untapped like talent. Unlimited potential can go out there. If he develops anything offensively in jump shot fashion, mm-hmm. anything, he will be one of the best big men in the league. If he if he oh, develops yeah. a jump shot at all, he will be one of the most dominant forces down there. Obviously, I'm not saying right now, this year, but give him a couple years. Give him until he's 22, 23. And he literally is going to get bigger. He's going to fill out. He's going to be in his physical prime. Mm-hmm. He will only get better from there. That is his potential. Is one of the best big men in the league. That's why you draft him in the lottery. That's why you trade up. You trade assets. You get him. Troy Weaver, you're a genius. Jalen Duran. I'm so excited for what I can see out of him. Pistons fans should be very excited for what he can blossom into. And the Pistons got one. They and, really did. And to be honest with you, too, like... And obviously, I mean, I hope this doesn't put pressure on him, like you saying stuff like that, because, like, it's all very true if he just develops an offensive game. But I don't even need him to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, he, can, he can be a great – I said this the other day. I, I want him, if anything, to be excellent at the things, like, you need a big man to be excellent at, which is grabbing boards and playing defense in the paint. And guess what? He looks pretty damn promising in both those categories. Again, like, the, the – Pro comp for me was Dwight Howard. I know he's a little bit smaller, but I mean, similar numbers at this point. I mean, literally just put up something the only Dwight Howard's ever done. You know, mm-hmm. Dwight Howard's only got to beat him in that category. Plus, Dwight Howard had 38 minutes in that game too. Like, for me, that's that's where I'm at with them, and that, and that's like I'm not putting any, like extra offensive expectations. Obviously, it'd be nice to have that, but yes. like. You don't need it. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you need a big man. Popovich, for an example, like we talked about him earlier. Sometimes you need guys, and this is why it's big on the fit thing with, with Jaden Ivey coming to the draft. And just like any Russell Westbrook, I hated that as soon as it happened because I think fit is more important. Sometimes you need guys to play their role. LeBron was talking about the other night. You know, hey, let's be honest. Our team's not built for three-point shooting. What's the one thing you've seen LeBron win with? Three-point shooters. Mm-hmm. And a couple superstars. You know, I ain't going to lie. A but, couple. But you know, a lot of times, like, if you, you want to at least make it to the playoffs with Braun, yes. give him some three-point shooters. I mean, look at Doncic. Mm-hmm. Same situation. Yes. You got like elite playmakers like that. Get him one guy to grab boards. Get him one guy to shoot the shit out of the ball. 
And and I'm not expecting Duran to develop into this overnight. Obviously, he's a project. Obviously, it's going to take time. But what Pistons fans should be excited about is his touch. That's why I yes. think the That's offensive fair. stats, the jump shots, will come mm-hmm. because his touch around the basket. He has very nice touch. He has very nice shot making. I don't, I don't, I don't know the word for it. Ability, but not yet. It's not in his game yet, but it's yeah. there. It's there to be molded. You get a guy like Rashad Lewis to be his coach. Yeah, that is only going to help him get better. Will only, and I go back to it every time. I know it's crazy. I know I sound like a lunatic, but that first preseason game he played, he had a turnaround fadeaway from like 16 feet and it missed, but it looked cash. It looked it, effortless. It, it, it I looked know, fluid. I know exactly what so, summer league. Summer, yeah, league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. summer league. Yeah. So many times you see big men and their jump shots are clunky. They're ugly. They don't look comfortable. That's not it with him. He doesn't look like he's straining himself. He doesn't look like it's an ugly jump shot. You see the fluidity. You you see the naturalness. You see the fluidity of the jump shot. And it will take some time for it to get there, yes. I'm not expecting this guy to be an 18 and 12 guy his rookie year. Nothing like that. If he ends up starting. But it's something you can mold on, something you can build with. And I'm extremely excited for it. Like I said, I'm going to say it again. The Pistons got one. Yeah. They really did. And the promise that, that you're talking about that I see and that I love too is like there's no hesitancy in it. Like I'm saying, like it's he's got that dog in him, you know. Mm-hmm. And like at certain points, like it could be bad. Like uh, Andre Drummond, there'd be a lot of times where he would like take an offensive possession, try to do something extra, and you're like, ah, uncharacteristic of like what your offensive abilities are. Yes. But with him, he's got it. Like you could be aggressive in that moment if you're if you're. Good at it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to be a bad man to be aggressive in the moments sure. and like capitalize on those situations. Like, Durant does, you know what I'm saying? Like, Drummond put up like kind of like ugly little like floaters or like mm-hmm. turn off the backboard, no finesse, no touch, like you were saying. Durant don't even need that sometimes. He's just no. oh. the, the, the dunk he had. Oh, oh my, my goodness, God. he ended a man's life last night, and I'm excited to see hopefully one of these games in the, throughout the year. The Pistons will be up big in the fourth quarter, they'll be up 20. Something like that, a game that's in the books. You're going against the Pacers. They already traded their whole team away. They're two losses away from Wemby. And the Pistons get up big, and you let you let Jalen loose. You put him out there. You say, take some jumpers. Take some isos. Let's see what you can do. Because I want to see that in action. I want to see him in, in a fourth quarter where the Pistons are up 20, put up five three-pointers just, just to see it. I just want to see it. The, the kid is, is going to be special. Like you said, he's... His offensive cap, I don't know where that is yet. Yeah. But alone what he already does at a high level, rebound and defend the rim and use his athleticism to score in the lane are things the Pistons didn't have last year. Yeah. The things the Pistons haven't seen since Andre Drummond or really before Andre Drummond. And it's so exciting to me. So exciting to me. If I may, real quick, too, like – I wouldn't say Dwight Howard was excellent offensively, but he still carried. Then it made, win the finals. Obviously, went up against Kobe and you know great team there, but still able to make it there. He also, the, he also ruined our like only chance of getting a LeBron Kobe finals. So just yeah. Hey, you got that <laughs> dirt. That's all I'm saying. Uh, where'd you get his haircut though? He should have. He was James. looking fresh last night. He was. He got that line <laughs> off, but he probably did it at Lady Jane's because, as you know, we broadcast this show live. From the headquarters of Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men in Birmingham. It's definitely awesome. When I get off the show, I could go sit in one of those chairs if I want to, you know, take an inch or two off. Maybe clean up my dead ends a little bit. I know Bethany or Alyssa will take care of me. So I highly recommend you get into a Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men near you and let them treat you like a king as well. They are open 10 to 8, 7 days a week. You can walk in anytime before you know it. Your hair will be game ready. So like I said, man, get into a Lady Jane's. Open 10 to 8, 7 days a week. No appointment necessary because at Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. We are the Woodward Heavyweights. We'll be right back. The sports marketing agency would not be who we are without great community partners like Higuera Health and Carol Zaniga. It's an awesome opportunity to partner with your organization. Higuera Health is a, a comprehensive behavioral health 
organization, we serve children through older adults with mental health, substance use, and uh, developmental disabilities across Western Wayne counties, and really excited to now be in Downriver communities as well. Give us a call at 734-458-4601. You don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers tan. With 26 locations in the Metro Detroit area and more coming, Chili Peppers Tanning is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the D. Join the Pepper Club for the best deals on unlimited tanning. Head to ChiliPeppersTanning.com. You just need a little chili peppers, man. Thursday, October 27th, join the Armani and Edwards with Maz show live in Dearborn. Braylon will be doing meet and greets after the show at 4 p.m. And stick around for trunk or treat at the Keller Williams parking lot at 6 p.m. Food trucks, costumes, and more, all from Mike Phillips and his wonderful Keller Williams staff. So make sure you come out. Again, that is Thursday, October 27th. Hang out with EE&M. <laughs> Look at, the, look at the reactions, man. Yeah. PK, yes. Stu. Look at Kevin Knox. Like, oh, I'm never going to play. Kevin Knox won ugly mofo. I ain't never seen the court. What up, though? Welcome back to the World with Heavyweights. I'm your boy, Easy joined by my man, Spin Mo Rex. What up, though? We are Young Sus to the TV booth. JB Smooth with the ones and twos. And we're just, we're just, I'm sure it's been happening all day on all the shows. We're just what basking happened? in our glory. Ah, ah. Sports.com, baby. I left here last night at halftime. Try to make it back home in time to watch the rest of the game. So I ended up stopping that beat up because it just wasn't going to happen. And like, it was just me in there and a couple like other people like, sitting at tables. I was at the bar. And like, I had literally had to contain my excitement because the poor bartender did not want to hear about how much I was excited about the Detroit Pistons young core. It was amazing from, to watch. From K on up, man. That's me. Yes, that, I, that's, that's where I was, man. Yeah. Speaking of like Sus having to contain himself, I know he wanted to talk last <laughs> segment. What, what do you got to say, man? Well, look, you know, I'd like to consider myself a hoops historian like LeBron is a hip-hop historian, you know. So, so I, really. I went back in the archives right, looking for a player <laughs> comp of, uh, uh, of Jalen Dern. And I even made it a, a tweet and a poll, and 100% of the people agreed. Jalen Dern is a descendant of Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> he averaged... He, Will Chamberlain in his debut got 43 points and 28 rebounds. <laughs> now, Jalen Duran in only 22 minutes... You know, the per 36 gets a little closer. Maybe Wilt was a little more NBA ready at the time, but and he was playing you know, against the trajectory, math teachers yeah. and plumbers. You know, that helps yeah. a little bit too. The, the trajectory is the same, though. <laughs> yeah. He is a descendant. He is a child of Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain did have sex with what is it, twenty thousand women? <laughs> yeah, so that was his claim to fame. We know Otto basketball. Porter. We know Otto Porter is one of his bastard children. Maybe <laughs> got to be Greg Oden. Greg too, Oden too. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe, maybe Jalen Duran's got some in that DNA pool. Putting numbers on the board. <laughs> Ballers are putting numbers on the boards. But all but all jokes aside, like player counts we were talking about earlier. Even if he's just like a slightly better DeAndre Jordan, with what these guys project to be, IV, Cade, Bay, all of that, that's what you need. Like yes. you don't need more than that. Can if he can be a Bam, an all-star level type center, or a Robert Williams with a little bit of offense, like I mean, then you're talking like, like you said, one of the best centers in the NBA. So it's just very fun, and that's why coming into season, I was actually more excited to watch Durant than Ivy. Not because I'm higher on Durant than Ivy, but because I just see the the vision for him is is more clear in what he can yes, be. Yes, a hundred percent. That's what it was for me too. And I've always like was like concerned, like expressed that because I had already been labeled the Ivy hater. Like yes. even yesterday when I want to do my rookie of the year, I, I like I want to say Jaden, you know, but Jaden Ivy, <laughs> you know, but it, it is what it is, man. And you you said you articulated perfectly. You, the vision for him is clear, and that's why it's easier to get excited for him versus like Ivy. Yeah, you know he's gonna be good. <laughs> like what kind of good though? You know what I'm saying like. What are, you, what are you giggling at? Cube 22100 in the Wolverine Sports chat said Wilt would have had to been like 70 and Jalen <laughs> Duran was his kid. It's, maybe he's his grandson, you know, yeah. something like that. It's possible. But make sure you guys tap in the Wilbur Sports chat. You know, we're live on WilbertSports.com. The Pistons had another first round draft pick, another lottery pick. Another, another one. Another one. And he played very well as well. You just spoke his name into existence. Jaden Ivey. Yeah. A lot, pretty much universally 
selected as the best guard in last year's draft. The Pistons got him. Yep. 19 points, 3 rebounds, 14 assists. This is in 31 minutes. He was 8 of 15 from the floor, 2 of 4 from 3, had 3 steals and 2 turnovers. And I'm telling you, this guy, like I, I made the claims about Jalen Duran being the best center in Pistons history, somewhat jokingly, but don't. Jaden Ivey might be the fastest player I've oh, ever okay. seen. Uh, what did you think I was going to say? I, well, we were t- you were just talking about Duran being the best center in Pistons yeah, history. Yeah, shut up. So I know where you're going with that one. Jaden Ivey might be the fastest player I've ever seen on an NBA floor. You look at guys like Russell Westbrook. You look at guys like John Wall. Mm-hmm. They are extreme, but the way the man switches gears is he, insane. It's fluid too, man. Fluid too. He didn't have the fumbles. He 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 slowed it down a little bit. You yeah. could tell he could go faster because he could go faster. But the, his first step, insanely quick, blows by guys with ease. Yeah. And in transition, there is nothing you can do from stop him, stopping him if he gets a rebound or gets an outlet from going coast to coast. There's no, you have to follow him. Because you're not getting in front of him because he's going to blow right by 100%. you. It's, it's insane to me how fast this guy is out there with the ball in his hands, too. That, I, I loved what I saw yeah. out of out of Jaden Ivey last night. I had multiple people talk to me. Rake was one of them. Obviously, Kool-Aid and Jeff and Sean, they were all down there saying he was feeding off of the crowd. He was feeding off of the emotion that Pistons fans were bringing. And it looks like the Pistons got another one. Yeah. It really does. It looks like the kid's going to go out there. He is going to ball. He's going to be a great player for this team. I know it's obviously way too early. It's the first game. They played They played the Magic Calm. That's a good measuring stick team for the Pistons. The biggest Magic thing to me. The Magic Calm. Yeah. The biggest thing to me about Jaden Ivey is his willingness to be a cutter. Like, cutting is something that hey, is, an, is an ideal thing. We've been screaming for Russ to be a cutter for years. But some players just don't want to do it. <laughs> Whoa. Not that kind of cutter. Like, cutting towards the basket. Yeah. Cutting towards the basket. Yes. Jaden Ivey is doing that. That first play was beautifully drawn up. That was, that was just a, an amazing thing to see. That's everything you wanted to see. That's a, a player using his skills and in, in athleticism in every facet that he can. And that was, and that was just special. Kevin Newsham in, in our Wilbert Sports chat just reminded me of a great point. The NBA did change the fast break stopping foul calls. You can't go out and just grab somebody if they get past you, or that team gets a free throw and possession of the ball. Yeah, that actually makes him even more of a makes yeah. it makes the call. I don't even know that until that's, like, yeah, that's that take foul. Yeah, yeah. it's the take foul. You can't just because they want to see yeah. open court basketball. You want to see guys finishing at the lane. You don't want guys just grabbing them from behind. So hey, Jaden no. Ivey With the can be very lethal. In today's NBA, where you can't hand check, you can't follow in the open court when you're behind somebody like that. Now, yeah, that actually like, and not that I like, I never thought he was a bad prospect or like would be a bad player at all. But that makes him like, t- like way more valuable in my book now too. Like, I was even aware of that. I- yeah. I'm embarrassed to say I learned about it last night. But damn, do we got the guy for that new rule? You know what I'm saying? Like you said. And I said immediately after you got drafted, too, because I, I then had to turn myself, because obviously I'm a Detroit Pistons fan at the end of the day, so I had to turn myself into, like, rooting for him. I made that video like, in my basement, old school style, on the Speakeasy channel, and I was like, it's the way he moves, like you said, with the ball. I've, we've, seen, I've, we've seen fast guys, and I'm not knocking John Wall. I'm not saying that he wasn't fast or anything like that, but, like, just the fluidity, just how, like, it's just wild, bro. It's, yeah. like, a, it's like a, you know, he played 2K. And there's certain animations that you just can't do anything about. You know, yes. Once they already start, you're, you're oh, cooked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jaden Ivey's that in real life. Like, dude's a cheat code. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, it's him. Yeah, it is. It is. And the Pistons are going to get the pest out of him. The Pistons are going to use He's him like that. He's going to get in the best. The best. The best. The best of you. I'm just so excited. The pain is real. <laughs> no, but I'm so excited for the Pistons to use him in this way, to use him in the open court, to use him in fast breaks where he looks damn near unguardable. Nobody's catching up to him. The best you can do is... Pull one of these and hope you poke the ball out. Because yeah. the guy is going around you. Dwayne Casey and the Pistons are going to get the best out of him. <laughs> Especially when you see what he's doing it with. Who he's the Pistons have now on their roster. Like a guy like Bogdanovich, who we're going to talk about very soon. Like a guy like Alec Burks when they come back. Isaiah Livers when he comes back. That are dead-eye three-point shooters. 
And then you have you add someone like Jalen Duran, who is a complete monster out there and an insane lob threat. Marvin Bagley, when he comes back, we know how much pressure he puts on the rim as a lob threat. I said this before the season, but seeing it live in action last night, just with it, I want to see it more than once. Kate Cunningham coming down with a rebound or getting the ball in the full court and having Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, and someone else running down the court with him instead of Trey Lyles and Corey Joseph and those he has legitimate threats on the basket now guys that you have to account for guys that other teams are going to have to account for or they're going to get burnt by them even if they're 18 years Mark. old even if they're 20 years old these guys have the physical skill sets and the tools to immediately make impacts and we did see Jaden Ivey miss a dunk we saw Jalen Duran miss a dunk we saw guys miss layups this is a young team. We all yes. need to scale back the excitement a little bit. They are going to go through growing pains. They are going to grow through things like this where they're missing easy shots. But just seeing them get to that situation and knowing that as they grow, as they get more comfortable, those are going to be makes is something that you can completely hang your hat on and say that, yeah, I don't think Jaden Ivey is going to miss an open dunk like that again. Yeah, I don't think... Jalen Duran is going to miss an open alley oop like that again. Yeah. And Pistons fans should be very excited for this young core. We're going to watch them blossom before our eyes. It's going to be amazing to see the transition of them from young, athletic, talented kids to legitimate NBA players. I'm excited to talk more Pistons. We got my guy, Jack Kelly from the Detroit Bad Boys, calling in all the way from Australia, mate. Can't wait to get his take on that. Uh, beautiful basketball mind. But before I do that, let me tell you guys about Cintron. All right, if you guys down at LCA, you probably see it around because it is the official energy drink of the Detroit Red Wings. Right now, you can pre-order their six-pack sampler at CintronWorld.com slash Red Wings. If you don't know, now you know it is the official energy drink of the Detroit Red Wings. Again, they got the cranberry, the OG, and the sugar-free in case you're trying to drop some LBs. We are the Woodward Heavyweights live on WoodwardSports.com, and we'll be right back with my guy, Jack Kelly. New to the game or a season better? OddsTrader.com has everything you need to make the right bet ahead of kickoff. Begin your handicapping journey with OddsTrader. Improve your edge by finding the best price on every game from sportsbooks in your backyard. Take advantage of the numerous sign-up bonus offers to pad your bankroll. Dive into key game statistics, player performance, and even account for the projected game day weather. Best of all, you can use the OddsTrader bet tracker to keep a log of your action. Welcome to OddsTrader, and best of luck. Hi, I'm John from Better A Mortgage, and to me, family is more than blood. That's why I'm the biggest family in Metro Detroit. If you're looking to buy a house or refinance and need a loan, come get treated better than family by me and our entire team here at Better A Mortgage. We pride ourselves on giving you better advice, better service, and a better loan experience. That's why we are Better A. If you're looking for a new mortgage, come get treated like family. Actually, better with Better A Mortgage. Visit us at mybetterate.com or call at 248-480-4467 today. Hey everybody, it's Chris here to tell you about Custom Health Centers. Has summer left you feeling a little chubby? <laughs> Not me. Perfect physical specimen. But Custom Health Centers could take the willpower out of weight loss. Whether you need to lose 20 or 120, Custom Health Centers will help you do it quickly and safely. Go to CustomHealthCenters.com or give them a call today at 844-789-THIN. Once again, that's 844-789-THIN. What up, though? Welcome back to the World Rebel Weights. I'm your boy, EJ, joined by my man, man Spin More Rex. What up, though? I'm falling with the ball there. Mama, mama. Live on WordSports.com, as always, from 5 to 7, Monday through Friday. And we are joined by a special guest, my guy, Jack Kelly from the Detroit Bad Boys, all the way from Australia. How, how is my uh, accent, by the way? Was that good or no? Man, nah, no? Oh, that was Hold a on. horrible accent, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, thanks so much for having me on, guys. Like this is awesome. Really, I uh, appreciate you having me on. 
Oh, we appreciate you, man. We love all the things you're doing. The yes. 313 takeaways oh, man. from Pistons game, dude. That is such a genius Thank idea. It's very original. It's great to see stuff like that. Pistons Twitter needs it. And we, we appreciate you for putting on for, for Detroit and the city all the way from, from down under. From down under. No, 100%, man. That, that, that means a lot. Like, um, I had that idea in the works for a bit, and um, I wasn't sure how it would go. But, um, yeah, I appreciate the love. For, For sure. sure, man. I, I gotta ask real quick, if I may. Yeah. How, how does one even become a Pistons fan from all the way in Australia? How's that happen? Because we haven't been good for quite a while. No, nah, so pretty much, man. It's it's pretty depressing story, really. So <laughs> back in, <laughs> so back in, like I've been an NBA fan since like 2005, and then um, in 2011, I was looking at some mock drafts. I don't know why, and I just saw this guy called Andre Drummond, and um, oh. I was a bit of a Dwight Howard fan, and I w- and he was touted to be the next um, Dwight, and I was like, wherever he gets drafted, I'm going to follow that team. And then yeah. here we are now. <laughs> Let's go. go. That's so what I'm saying. Now you have another big man that you can love on this Pistons team in Jalen Duran. And we saw him in action last night. We saw him, like, I already read his stat, 21 minutes. He had 14, 10, and three blocks. What do you expect out of him going forward, and, and how quickly do you think – until he'll be in that starting lineup as an 18-year-old in the NBA? I think, man, just firstly, like, he changed the complexion of that game. For sure. He came into the, into the, uh, in the first quarter. I think we were down 21-6, to six, and he's just the presence on the interior, man. He changed the way Orlando were attacking the cup. Um, and just, I mean, man, how is he still 18? Like, that, <laughs> that's the crazy like, part, yeah. The frame on this kid is insane, but to your question about his role and sort of the starting position, I think obviously there's injuries to Nerlens Noel and Marvin Bagley have definitely accelerated his, um, his standing in the rotation. And man, I mean, it's going to be hard to keep him out of the starting lineup just with mm-hmm. the impact he had. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a big stew guy, but you just see the defensive presence, a guy of their own size, like just the way he can alter the game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, some people, it feels like they have that like uh, knack or like almost like a spidey sense out there on defense, like those big that men. it factor. Yeah, I mean, D- Dwight was it. That's funny. I-, I was a big Dwight fan too, like, because initially I was a big LeBron fan, and then obviously Dwight beat him in that, you know, the Eastern Conference Finals went on to lose in the finals, unfortunately. But like, during it feels like more of a, a comp to Dwight than obviously Andre Drummond was, and Dude, he's looking the part now, too. It's it's insane, bro. It's literally insane. Yeah, for sure. And I think the thing with Duran, the difference between him and Andre is you can already just see the defensive instincts. Like, Andre was a, a terrific athlete as well, but I don't know, some of his timing was just off here and there. Um, Duran, he just seems like, for an 18-year-old in particular, his defensive awareness, he's still got stuff to work on, but... Yeah, Troy Weaver wins once again. Wins once again. And another one of Troy Weaver's wins, another one of Troy Weaver's picks, Jaden Ivey, was on full force, showing full full steam last night. I talked about it earlier on the show, how he is one of the fastest players I've ever seen on an NBA court. I, up there, you know, Russell Westbrook, John Wall, guys like that. I don't, I've never seen that type of speed in a Pistons uniform, let alone almost anywhere in the NBA. What does what does he bring to this team, and what can that speed do to change the type of game that the Pistons want to play? Well, I think, first of all, the thing that this roster has lacked, um, I mean, in my time being a Pistons fan in the past decade, I don't recall having an athlete like this at the guard position, and you're exactly right. Like, he's already... You could make an argument he's a top five athlete in the league. Like, mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. got the frame, the speed bounce and it the beauty of it is he complements k perfectly they sort of they have skills that um that are similar but they also you know Cade's more of that herky jerky he'll manipulate the defense sort of try and pick it apart whereas ivy's just gonna bust through and get to the cup at will and i think just having that one two punch it just makes the defense that much more accountable it's a lot harder to scheme against and yeah someone i mean he only took one free throw last night but we've seen him throughout preseason and summer league just get to the free throw line at will and anytime you can get easy points i mean that's going to help your offense as well for sure 100 percent. we're talking about the new uh, league rule on the fast breaks as well 
And that's going to benefit us tremendously because, like Spence related to earlier, like no one's going to get in front of that kid, and you're not going to catch up to him. So your only choice at that point is to grab him and stop him. You know, like it's, it's a cheat code. It yeah. literally is. I got to ask, man, you obviously started the three on three thoughts. There's three things you liked, uh, one thing you disliked, and three things to keep an eye out for. Do you have takeaways at this point from last night's game? I, um, I, I didn't have time to put the thread together. But I was going to just go three things I like, one thing I don't like, three more things I like. Because it was just one <laughs> of those games, about. man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was just such, I mean, the only thing I didn't like was probably just Duran's free throw shooting. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get on his case for that. That's just something to keep an eye on. Um, but there was so much to take away. And I think aside from the individual performances, what I just... You know, I think that was just a glimpse into what we can expect from this team in the future. And it's funny, like, he had such a balanced scoring attack. We had five guys score 14 points or more. And interestingly, that sort of coincides with how the going-to-work team played and the bad boys. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. I think that's what we're going to see in the future with the, such a balanced scoring attack. Um, and... That was my major takeaway is it's so hard to defend when there's multiple options. You know, I mean, I mean, Stu's three, corner three to win the game. Like, you know, how do you account for that? Like, he's the fifth option on the floor at that point yeah. and he's mm -hmm. the guy hitting the game winner. So, I mean... That's your boy too. And each... 100% my guy. Like, I was yeah. so happy for him because he'd missed his first three um, on the night. But each guy, they just sort of had like a five-minute patch. I mean, Cade had a patch in the third... Bogdanovich hit like four threes in five minutes, it felt like. Duran went nuts in the first half. I mean, it's just, it, that is how you win games at the high levels, having so many options. For sure, and we have more options that aren't there yet. And that's what I, when I saw that lineup out there of our bench, when it was Kevin Knox, Corey Joseph, Killian Hayes, uh, I think it was Beef Stew, Diallo. Oh, no, Jalen Duran and Diallo. I was yeah. like, oh, gosh. But then I remembered that in a couple weeks, Livers. we're going to have Marvin Bagley. We're going to have Livers. Noel. We're going to have Al Burks out there. And guys like that, when you have – we saw already – what adding one 40% three-point shooter in Boyan Bogdanovich can do for this team. What does it mean when you add another one in Alec Burks and another, another guy one. who can knock down threes in livers? What? How can that expand this offense? Oh, first of all, I, I'm not used to having shooting in Detroit. It's yeah. felt like <laughs> facts. Like facts. The past, like the past decade, it feel like Detroit would recruit a shooter and they'd come here and shoot sub 30%. Like, but on a serious note, like. Anytime you can add 40% three-point shooters, no matter who's on the floor, that additional spacing, it's just going to open up the court for everyone. And it opens up cutting lanes, additional driving lanes. You can space out the pick and roll better with Cade at the top. It just, anytime you can create space, I mean, you've seen what the Warriors done. The space, spacing is key yeah. in today's mm -hmm. league. And you, you bring in 40% shooters, that's... It can't not help you on offense. It's yeah, for sure. Especially you got guys like Cade and Ivy now too that can kind of get to the rim like at will. Yes. you know. And then another thing too is like when you get those shooters, man, I can't stop smiling. I apologize, but now they have Duran. The Pistons have Duran to grab the boards that they don't make. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You saw actually in the fourth quarter last night's game. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think we had three like missed shots in a row. It was right before Duran got uh, tagged out for Stewart. Now we were all pissed about it, but like he was the one clean up on the boards and kept giving like guys re, you know retries and like. Man, I, I'm I'm so excited the Pistons got this going on. Chris, I know you had a question mm -hmm. for Jack. Go go ahead and ask it. Yeah, to build off of what you said earlier about the about the team effort, to me the most interesting stat line and takeaway from the night was not the two young guys. It was Cade scoring 18 points and having 10 assists, and Cade showing that he doesn't have to be like Luca and have 35 points every game. He can he is totally comfortable facilitating the ball and being the secondary option to feed whoever whoever it is the shooters the slashers the rim runners all of that so that i think was was a big sign of progress and and one that i think is important to monitor and and a key factor of the pistons success 100 yeah, percent. absolutely uh, i agree with that because k i mean i don't think k's going to be a 25 point uh, plus point a game scorer 
I think if you go back and watch him in high school and at every level, he is a facilitator first. And he's been described as a slow burn. He's someone who's going to, in the first half, sort of just get a feel for the game, get his teammates involved. And then he'll look for the time to attack. Like he found his niche there in that third quarter. And, you know, he scored eight points or so. And I think that's how Cade is going to be at his optimal, is getting his teammates involved, because that's ultimately how you win. That's how you win playoff series. That's how you win championships, is with teammates. So that heliocentric style, it's, it's hard to keep that up for 82 games plus. And I actually look at a stat line too, and between, and I could be mis, I guess confusing my lines here, but it looks like between Cade and Ivy, only five turnovers, which is like yes. a plus sign. And to the teammate standpoint, it was Cade and I having to drop 20. I, I, I do remind people, it was the magic to be, you know, just, it was, it was a lottery team from last year, but. So oh, are we. It's it fair. It's a good it's measuring fair. stick. A lot of young talent yeah. over there in Orlando as well. Jack, I, I appreciate you joining us, man. If, if I may, uh, do, you, do you partake in American football at all since becoming a Pistons fan or no? Yeah, I uh, I was on a podcast with your boy, Sean Murphy, and shout out. the other day. And we'll, yeah, shout out to the, um, the half court. But um, I don't. I, I saw the Hard Knocks series, and I was like, all right, this is my chance. You know, all my Twitter feeds, Detroit fans – you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the Lions, and then uh, there's no way, bro. There's no way I'm getting up at 3 a.m. on a Monday morning. <laughs> that's Experience fair. that pain. I see you guys go through. That's fair. That's fair. I, I would stay away from one of you if you're not tied into it. Don't don't do it to yourself. Just stay far yeah. away, observe from a distance. I have one but, question though. Oh, I, I was gonna say the reason why I asked. We're doing the, the contest for the, the Dan Campbell. Oh yeah. So people, if they do a Dan Campbell accent, they can win front row tickets to the Lions game. I was asked, do you, do you have a Dan Campbell impersonation? You want you mind pulling out for us, or even an American oh, accent? I, I couldn't. Leave, I honestly couldn't even do it, man. <laughs> like I couldn't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. And I, I have one question. I saw it floating around on Twitter. I don't remember who it was from, but I think it's a possibility if he gets the playing minutes. Could Jalen Duran legitimately go after a first team all rookie spot? Oh yeah. This year, you know, if he has the minutes, if he's out there playing, I think it's a definite possibility. Absolutely. Yeah, for I sure. Think so, especially with Chet out for the season. Um, not saying he was cemented for a first team all rookie, but there's definitely a spot there at the big position. I mean, I think we saw last night, Paolo, that guy looks legit, but yeah, Durant, like, yeah, absolutely he can. He's, sure. If he keeps up that defense and just the way he plays, he's going to rack up points and rebounds in his sleep. So the numbers, I think, will be there if he gets 20 minutes a night. Definitely. So it'll all be role dependent, I would say. Yeah, and I think Paolo could fall in under that, like, the power forward category for the all rookie. Oh, yeah. Center, I mean. Mark, Mark Smith, maybe. I haven't seen him yet, but... Yeah, but he, I think he'd be power forward, too. No? I, he playing, I don't really play. He had 17, too. I, he scored a lot more than I expected him to do, yeah. Jabari. This class is looking pretty good, I ain't going to lie. It is. Um, Pistons are going 82-0, and 0, so if we there use we last year's formula, you know what I mean? <laughs> wins, <laughs> wins over stats. Over anything else, yeah. <laughs> All day. <laughs> All day. <laughs> That's what they told Kate. You didn't win enough, so you can't get rookie of the year. <laughs> Jack, uh, do, do you want to shout out your, your Twitter page or any of the content and articles you got going on yourself? Yeah, for sure, man. So you can find me over on Twitter at JackKelly313. Uh, I do what I write for Detroit Bad Boys of SB Nation, so check out the page. And also started up um, a Pistons live stream with a company called Playback, so we'll be uh, broadcasting couple of games a week um it's called at the home court uh all the info's in my bio so yeah if you're a pistons fan and want to watch the game with fellow pistons fans hit it up that's 100 percent, man i appreciate you joining us and I, I definitely want to do this again thank you yeah definitely thank you man 100 percent, guys thank you so much and um yeah you guys do awesome work and i've loved seeing your growth so yeah keep it up appreciate thanks brother it, appreciate you. you to jack's the man he's the man he's the man he, he brings a very analytical thought base but like the 313 thing is so brilliant brilliant it's creative and he he does great stuff great follow on twitter go give him a follow and, and real quick if out. i may too I, I know we have to go to break here but like uh i feel like when you watch documentaries stuff like that they always use like someone with an accent on purpose because it just draws your attention and i feel like they get automatic like 10 more iq points like the british the oh, brits for and sure. australia for sure for sure, for sure. 
But that's why I had my Siri set to an Australian accent. There you go, mate. Makes it sound like I know what I'm talking about when I bring something up and Siri tells it to me. <laughs> but the Pistons' defense might need a little work, especially without Jalen yeah. Duran out there. But if your defense needs help, all you have to do is hit up Guardian Alarm because Guardian Alarm will keep you safe and give you peace of mind, whether you're at home or on the road. With their 24-7 local monitoring, they make sure the things that are important to you stay safe. All you have to do is call 1-800- Stay out. That's 1-800- Stay out. Right now and let them know Woodward Sports sent you. We are the Woodward Heavyweights and we'll be right back. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for just $10 a month and get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for just $10 a month. Join today at any of the 50 plus Detroit area locations. It's a great day to get some Cintron in your life. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There it is, there it is. Cintron, here we go. Gotta grab the cranberry. Oh wait, it's two for four. Gotta double up with the classic as well. Cintron world, baby. Cintron, available at select Kroger's, and if you wanna know how, go to at CintronWorld.com. You get dope like me. You know what? Why wait? Great taste, guaranteed. Good eye, mate. Are you a fan of Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions? Or are you not? Maybe you're a Packers fan. Go Pack, go ahead. You can watch both teams if you send in your impersonation of Dan Campbell, man. All right. Make sure you guys do so on Twitter, on Instagram, and tag us. And also use the hashtag Woodward Front Row. Those are front row tickets at Ford Field to watch the Detroit Lions take on. I almost said the Minnesota Packers. I have no clue where that came from. The Green Bay Packers. Minnesota. Minnesota. Make sure you guys do so. I'm looking forward to it. I might send one in myself. And if I'm, I'll do it. I'm going to send one in myself. I'm going to have you do it too. Okay. We should all do it. All right, man. <laughs> all right, man. All right, man. What up, though? Welcome back to the World Whatever You Waste. I'm your boy, he's joined by my man, Spin Mo Rats. What up, though? We got Young Suss in the TD booth. JB Smooth with the ones and twos. Jack is the man. Jack is the man. That was dope. Shout out. We're live Shout on WoodwardSports.com. Make sure you tap into that Woodward Sports chat and get in your <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> the uh, the Woodward Sports chat, Kevin Newsham says, uh, was he Canadian? <laughs> no, he, he was saying, uh, was your accent Canadian? Oh, was my accent Canadian? I don't know, man. I don't know. I just know we're live every day from 5 to 7 on WoodwardSports.com. See, that sounds more Joe Swanson than it does Dan Campbell. Yeah, no, that yeah. wasn't Dan Campbell. It's, Dan Campbell's tough because it's a little bit of like a southern swing, but yeah. not fully there. Yeah. You know what it's I'm saying? It's got a little bit of the twang. Yeah, it's like a sub, like halfway southern Joe Swanson, yeah. maybe. I, I don't know, man. Well, we got more Pistons to talk about. We do. And we're, if I, man, Boyan Bogdanovich. Yeah. Hey. Got that thing on them, two of them, if you may. Strap. Detroit Rappers might have to start saying, I got that Bogdanovich on me. You yeah, feel me? Real. Boy, it was shooting, sniping at one point, six hey. or seven. That was bar. That was yeah. pretty good. I'm just saying, I though, got that it was that good. Trunk. I got that bogey in hey. the trunk. Hey. 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 Isn't he number 44, too? Yeah. Oh, Detroit oh, Rappers are going to go crazy with that. I got that faux faux Bogdanovich hey. on me. Hey, dude. I got that faux faux Bogdanovich. In case you want to try it. All right, that's You're honestly, welcome, Sadi. I'll just say baby. try it, bitch. That's honestly pretty fire. <laughs> I got that full full Bogdanovich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just say, Keisha, want to try it, bitch, but then that make me the bitch. And I make that body twitch. Woo! There you go! Yeah. But speaking of <laughs> unlimited shooting, speaking of one of the best shooters I've seen in Pistons uniform in a while. In a very long while. The Probably the, the best. best. Probably the best. Best pure shooter, yeah. Boyan Bogdanovich, the mind-bending math teacher, the man that goes out there. I said he might look like a math teacher, but he is automatic from the three-point line. The Pistons and Troy Weaver went out there and got a piece to bring him in here, not only be a starter, but be their leading point scorer in game one. 24 points, five rebounds, two assists in 34 minutes. 18 of 16 from the field, 6 of 10 from downtown, a steal, and he's plus plus six on the night. And he missed his easiest shot. 
The dude had a wide open shot, literally took a dribble after oh. being wide open, got even more wide open, and missed it. I was yeah. surprised. But the guy is automatic. The guy is a weapon. He's got the strap on him. And I am so happy to have a guy like that on our team. Yeah. To have an asset like that on the Detroit Pistons. Because the Pistons, as a franchise, haven't had a dude like that. You could say Rip Hamilton. You could say Chauncey Billups. These guys, they're not the volume of shooter that Boyan Bogdanovich is. And I don't think they're as pure as Boyan Bogdanovich is. The guy is a weapon outside of the three-point line. The Pistons needed something like that. And Troy Weaver went out there and got him. And, oh, yeah, he got another one, another 40% three-point shooter that's waiting in the wings to come back in Alec Burks. For nothing. So, for nothing. For nothing. You gave up Kelly Olenek and a bag of chips to get this guy. I'm just saying that's what Troy could surround Kevin Durant and Cade with. Troy Weaver adding a piece like Boyan Bogdanovich to this roster was so important, was so detrimental to not only the downfall of the Jazz, but so incremental to the success of the Detroit Pistons. The Detroit Pistons finally got a guy that when Cade's driving to the lane, when Ivy's going balls to the wall 100 miles an hour, you could kick it out there and you know he's going to knock it down. The Pistons got a weapon to put outside of that three-point line. And they got it for nothing. Nothing. Did you miss Kelly O'Leonard last night? No. Did you miss Saban Lee last night? No. This is a guy that is a career 40-point shooter. This is a guy that is a career 16 and a half, 17 points per game score. This mm -hmm. is a guy that has seen more playoff basketball seen some than the entire Pistons roster combined. This is a leader. They said he was a vocal leader last night. Well. He was doing a lot of talking. I was very impressed with Boyan Bogdanovich's first role as a Piston. And I expect him to get better as the Pistons season climbs on. I expect Dwayne Casey and the Pistons to use him as he should be. I don't want to see him guarding Paulo Bencaro in the post a lot. <laughs> yeah. that, that was pretty ugly. He was yeah. getting worked. But he made up for it. Because he's got that strap. Fofo on deck, boy, I'm Bogdanovich, I'm tipping. Like, the guy is going <laughs> crazy, man. I love okay. it. <laughs> Damn, might have to check my we pockets. Got that ghost, ghost, ghost Rider out here. Yeah, yeah, ghost, Rider. ghost Rider for hire. Come on, man. Hey, you, you ever been like hooping with somebody and they get like a, they just put up an ugly shot and it goes in there? Yeah. Shooter's touch, shooter's touch. Yes. Even yeah. when he got fouled yeah. on the M1, you yes. know what I'm saying? It was, like, it was still a clean, like, dude. Like, the, Bullion Bullion Bullion, the Bullion experience is going to be so fun because, like, he was doing heat check threes. Yes. That's something that he never did in Utah. Yes. Like, he got the complete freedom to just, all right, I'm going to just chuck it. He got away from those Mormons. He came to the D. <laughs> he saw the swag cam, the ice on. He's like, all right, I feel the Pistons. I'm pulling up for 34. You know? Unlock the I swag. I love it, dude. I love if, it. If, if uh, Justin or Ryan, the guys from the Woodward Sports Graphic Department, shout out. Both those guys are amazing at the job. Put some buffs on. You need some buffs on, boy. <laughs> yeah. All right, some buffs yeah. with, the, with the point four four in the background. Like, yeah. 100%. Got that fofo boy. Like I'm strap. Bogdanovich, dude. That it, like I want to go record. Nah, Soldi right James now. has to use that. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Sada, I mean Sada's a big big basketball yeah. dude. Yeah. Sus, how you feeling about Boyan Bogdanovich? No, it was it was fun. Uh, obviously, all jokes aside, you know the heat check stuff was cool to just see see him play that freely. But yeah, the best shooter that the Pistons have had in quite some time, if not ever, and that's why. I want it. I want him to ride it out. I know everybody's talking about trading them and flipping them as an asset. And maybe you do that if if a good deal comes along. But the reason I want the Pistons to keep him is because that can show the Pistons and that can give Cade, Ivy, all those players a feeling of what it's like to have that around. Yes. Because and that's important to development because you can't just have Cade have. A, a total lack of talent, and then say, "Oh, just do these things and imagine, imagine when they're when these players <laughs> imagine are better." If Trey Lyles yeah. was knocking this down. Yeah. Imagine if Hamadou Diallo was hitting yeah. at a sixty percent clip. Exactly, that stunts a player's growth. So this is the type of stuff that can accelerate a growth. And to me, if you get two second round picks for him or whatever, yeah, that's more value. But is it worth the offset of? Potentially just more development for Cade, Ivy, mm -hmm. for everybody else on the team. I want to see Boyan as a yeah. for, I want to keep for, him. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, yeah. for at least a couple years. We were talking hoops all night in the group chat with Neil and Jeff, and like that's I, I 
Neil talked about, you know, he could turn to another first round pick for us. Yeah, he could. I kind of want to keep that though. I kind of want to keep. Kind of want to keep. Kind of want to keep that strap. Keep the ratchet tucked. You yeah. know, we got we got to make sure that thing stays down. You can always use a guy like that. You really can. There is no team in the NBA that can't use a guy. One hundred percent. And again, too, like uh, back to the pro comp situation, and, and like I'm not. Cade's similar to Lucas' game, but he, he can be. I'm not. I'm avoiding from that pro comp though, because Cade's a different player altogether. Like he plays a little bit more defense, and, and Lucas is amazing, by the way. Shout out to him. But another one of those guys. You surround him with shooters. You can go places. I want to keep boy out. If, if you truly mm-hmm. want to go places, we feel like we can go somewhere. That's a guy I wouldn't mind having on our side mm-hmm. throughout his contract, and maybe even resign until he gets old and dusty. Like I said, he is a guy that any team would want, that the yeah. Pistons obviously saw as an asset. Troy Weaver went out there and took him from the fire sailing jazz. He got him out of Mormonville. He got him out of that <laughs> salty city in Utah, and he brought him to the D, and now the Pistons are using him to his full potential. The guy should be putting up 10 three-pointers a game. The guy should yeah. be getting the ball from every drive and kick that Cade Cunningham is doing, and Dwayne Casey is making sure he's in those situations. I said it last night. Before that last play, when they called the timeout, mm-hmm. I said inbound to Cade, off-ball screen action, get bogey and open three, game over. It it worked out, but it was Isaiah Stewart instead of bogey. So I was like, all right, I'll take it. You know, beggars can't be choosers. But had, knowing you have a guy like that is such a confident feeling. When you see other teams doing that, when the Hawks come to Detroit mm-hmm. and they're hitting threes, when the Celtics come to Detroit and they're hitting threes, if the Nets come to Detroit and they're hitting threes, we know, oh, we got Bogey. He can go bar for bar with these guys. He can go shot for shot with the big dogs. And again, we got Alec Burks waiting in the wing, who is another career 40% three point shooter. So, yeah. I'm just you don't want to put a Choi on because, boy, I got that boy on. Gita. Gita. What up, son? dropping bars yeah. all day today. Everybody <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> I'm just saying with with him too. Another thing we didn't get to see much is the playmaking of him too. Yes. We talked about that when we traded him, the the ball handling yeah. and what he can what he can do in pick and rolls. So there's just a lot to unlock with him, and that's why he's important for the Pistons. Yeah. Boy, I got that boy on that faux faux that boy on. That's pretty good. That's bars. Yeah, that's bars. All right, sorry guys, we're done. <laughs> We're, we're, not <laughs> we're, we're not done. done. We're, we're not done. done. It's we gonna carry on all season. Pistons. We got we're a lot more bars season. coming yeah, for yeah. you. We're but, gonna be freestyling you know, all season. If you want to go write some bars, think of some bars. You need a nice, quiet place to do that. And you can do it at Big Boy. And you can Big enjoy some food Big at Boy the same try time. Drop bars in their in their ads. They do. Yeah, they got the curly fries for a limited time only. All new burgers and loaded fries are at Big Boy. It's not the Slim Jim. It's the Big Jim. The chili cheese is such a tease. Guess what else is new? The bacon blue. And if you want the full foe, you're going to bring bouillon too. How about upgrading those fries as well? They got the chili cheese fries, the baked potato fries, and the banger of all bangers, the nacho fries. And Make sure as well. you go satisfy those taste buds at Big Boy. Three NBA championships. Detroit fans were there. Eleven Stanley Cups. Detroit fans were there. Four World Series wins. Detroit fans were there. And uh, that one Lions playoff win in 1991. Yeah, Detroit fans were there. Woodward Sports, where the fans are. Fellas, let's be honest. We like things to be easy. We like simple stuff, like sports seven days a week. We like things uncomplicated, like Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Sign in, sit down, watch your favorite team play. And before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's wicked awesome. Hey everyone, I'm Chris here to tell you about Chili Peppers Tanning. <laughs> Chili Peppers is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the spotless, sanitized rooms with trained, certified tanning professional. Join the Peppers Glove for all the best deals and they'll beat all competitors by $5. $5? $5? $5. Ooh. Don't forget to pick up Australian Gold, Designer Skin, Cal Tan, and Swedish Beauty Lotions. Chili Peppers Tanning has the hottest bulbs, the hottest deals, the darkest tans, your vitamin D headquarters, and I'm pretty sure we'll see Boyan Bodanovich there a few times. For sure. Well, honey. <laughs> what up, though? Welcome back to Woodward Every Way. Well, Live on WoodwardSports.com. I'm your boy, Easy, joined by my man, Spinner. <laughs> what up, though? 
<laughs> we got JB. Oh my god, JB's moving the ones and twos. My guy, Young Sus, aka Chris Pilati. Period. Ah, period. Uh. <laughs> period. Ah, period. Uh. We had some lines in the prep, and we'll get to it. This is such depressing Maybe. talks. I want to keep talking piss. Sorry. Too. Let's, let's, let's pull out the extendo that boy on. All right. I want to talk about Killian's performance last night. Yeah, anti, the anti Boyan. The anti Boyan. <laughs> it's like Boy, Boy Killian Hodge. Hayes combined with Boyan Bogdanovich makes the greatest NBA player the world has ever seen. <laughs> like, I gotta be honest with you. A lot of people are like, yeah, he had a rough game. I don't, I don't hate it. I'm still, like, I don't on hate the, it either. I'm still on the side of like that's like what he is. He still brought the defense. You know what I'm saying you still saw that side of it, and I still think the offensive side is like there to develop. I, yes. We watched in the first quarter, maybe it was the second quarter. At that yeah. point, we had that little look like it was either a floater or like an alley oop to somebody. He missed it. I mean, he came back down, reaching his right leg. I don't yeah. know what's going on with that situation, yeah. but like. He looked fine. He played through it. Yeah, I mean, he's coming off the bench, guys. Yeah. He gets hurt a lot. Yo, he, he does get hurt a lot. But he gets hurt a lot, yeah. He's coming off he's the French. bench. Yeah, like, he's not... I, I don't know. Oh, my wee-wee. I don't know what you want from him at this point. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> I don't know my wee-wee. Oh, <laughs> my wee-wee. But you, you look at... He's still an asset, paper, though. Killian Hayes, three points, five assists, five rebounds, one of nine shooting, 0-3 from three, three steals, and a big block on Mo Bamba. You know, ball like a mall, but it was bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, that guy's a, 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 a real ass, by the way. Shaq Ooh, you met him? Yeah, in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? This is terrible. Yeah, he's not a PLS. Not a, not a is nice there a story? Guy. I gotta hear the story. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you later. Nah, but I'm, Killian did what Killian does. He went out there, asking. even shooting one of nine and 0 of three from the field. He was plus six on the game. He had the five rebounds. He had the five assists. Playing great defense, obviously, with the three steals and one block on Mo Bamba. I expect him to improve as the season goes on. We need to see if that change of his jump shot actually equates to him making more jump shots. That little push shot where he missed a standstill layup, that was very ugly. His step back three that clanged off the front of the rim, that was very ugly. You don't, you don't like to see was that, that one, kind of that stuff. That was like late the shot clock, though, wasn't it? I don't know, but it was ugly either yeah, way. Yeah. I can't remember. I can't. It was terrible to watch. But you love what he brings to the team. The guy is the best perimeter defender you have on this team. The guy is a very good facilitator, obviously, a very good distributor of the rock. So you yeah. need him to go out there and play to his strengths. It does. It did look a little bit like he was forcing it. Mm-hmm. It looked like he was trying, okay, I'm going to show these guys that I can hit this three. I'm going to show these guys that I can go out there and do this. You need Killian Hayes to be Killian Hayes. Especially, I keep saying it, but once we have that second unit intact, whether that's Marvin Bagley out there with Isaiah Livers, with Alec Burks, you can have Alec Burks be that strap. You got Fofo fo in one, you got the 50 cal in the other, Alec Burks coming off yes. the bench going crazy. With Killian Hayes yes. leading that offense will be very impressive. I think Killian Hayes needs to kind of relax, take a step back. I don't want him to be timid. I still want him to attack. But don't don't pull these step back threes when you haven't hit a shot yet. Don't expect contact. Just go for an easy layup. There were things you could pick apart there, but there were still things that, that impressed me out of him. And the Pistons need... They know what they need to do to get the best out of him. And once he has legitimate shot makers out there with the second group, that'll help him a lot. When you put Killian Hayes out there with Hamadou Diallo and Kevin Knox and people like that, it's going to emphasize the things he does poorly. But when you put him out there with a ratchet and a strap like Alec Burks, with a guy who can knock down open shots and make some offense for himself in Isaiah Livers, a guy who is a menace under the basket in Marvin Bagley. It will allow Killian to do what he does best and let his offense build off of that. Yeah, that's and that's kind of the point I'm getting to too. Is like, as a facilitator, he's still there. Yes. As a defender, he's still there. I look at and he's not even like our starter again. He's coming off the bench, mm-hmm. and you have the pieces on now on the bench to complement what he does well as a facilitator. Whether it's like you said, Burks coming back shooting the three. Well, you got Noel coming back and throwing the oops too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I still there's still value in having a Killian Hayes, mm-hmm. and I'm not telling you that he is this. I'm just telling you, like, I guess a championship piece that he reminds me of, and I've done it in the past too. But he's like what six six. Worst version, obviously, of Rondo. Rondo. Yeah. R- Rondo never yeah. had to be like an excellent offensive piece. You know what I'm saying? At the rim, he just played great defense, and he gave his shooters the ball. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. gave guys the ball where they shot best, and like Killian come off the bench and give you that. It, yeah. With no matter who's on the floor, like that. That's a piece that fits with everybody. There's certain guys like 
uh, James Harden or, or Max, like the dribble, dribble, dribble guys, have the balls in their hand all the time because like, they're looking for their own shot. It's a little semi like yours, too. If you're wide ass open, they trust you with it. Mm-hmm. But Killian, obviously, he is a bit timid. He knows he can't shoot like that at this point. Yes. Like, so he's going to give guys those type of shots. And I still have faith in him finishing at the rim. Again, mm-hmm. that situation where he's holding down his knee maybe could have affected his, his performance last night. Maybe he did it because, because we've seen him be that like throughout his career. But I'm going to give him that excuse for last night. I mean, I, I'm a, you guys know I'm a slap ass fan at times, though. But I, that's. I'll give him that because I've seen some plus stuff out of him in the season, the preseason. What yeah. up, though, Sus? Yeah, I think you I think up? you shouldn't be. <laughs> I think you shouldn't be. Those shirts were hilarious, by those the way. Those were great. Uh, oh, they made shirts. I for think him? you had to. Oh yeah, we got yeah, they did. Yeah, we have to. Copy you, those. Yeah, we're all copping one. So Pause with this. with Killian Hayes, no, you're good. With Killian Hayes, the thing that is just comforting is that okay, this is his role. It's fine. Like yeah. We've known he's limited. Yeah. For We've had three years of sample size showing that he is a limited player. And while it'd be great if the Pistons improved, or if Killian improved, and it would be better for the Pistons, but he's fine as a backup guard, as a, as a leader of the second unit, like you said, yeah. especially when you get all the pieces on that second unit, Burks, Bagley, uh, you know, whatever the combination is, because we know this ro- rotation is going to tweak a lot throughout the years, but giving Killian Hayes more weapons to work with will only benefit the Pistons. And so he doesn't need to be, you know, a James Harden, who was his pro comp. Remember, I told you I hate pro comps. Yeah. His pro comp was James Harden. He can be Rondo. Yes. And when you have Cade and Jaden <clears throat> Ivey and Jalen Duran becoming a monster, like, that's there's, what you need. There's so much to work with. Right. Yeah. He is. The perfect second group point guard, and that's always been my dream for him. And that's what that's what you expect him to be. That's what Pistons (laughs) fans should should expect out of him. As (laughs) I mean, he is pretty handsome, but that is what Pistons fans (laughs) should expect. Hey, yo! (laughs) You're gonna tell me Killian Hayes is not a handsome man? Stop it. Exactly. Not the crickets. So that's what Pistons fans can expect out of Killian Hayes is to be. That second second group forward to beat or second group point guard, that second guy off of the bench to lead that team to get those guys their open shots. Because as much as we want to see Burks and Bagley and Noel and Livers out there, you need a guy to run that offense and distribute the ball. And that's what Killian Hayes can be for the Detroit Pistons. So anything he does offensively, any more that he brings offensively, is just an addition to that. Because what we did by going out and getting a Boyan Bogdanovich, getting an Alec Burks, having Jaden Ivey come in, having Isaiah Livers step up as a legitimate weapon. The Pistons don't need Killian Hayes to be that fourth, fifth offensive option anymore. They can allow him to rest into his role, to settle into his role, and be the guy off the bench. So Killian Hayes can be a good player yeah. for this Pistons team without being this offensive threat that Pistons fans want to see out of him because that's yeah. not what he is. And like to a couple comments in the Wilbur Sports chat speaking to like the Detroit Pistons defeat and I mentioned this earlier though that we defeat you know another another lottery team another top three lottery team if you, if you will in the Magic but I'm not looking for wins out of this season. I mean, if they come, great. You know what I'm saying? Because then you're getting what you want a lot sooner than you expected but I'm just looking for the pieces the vision of what they can be. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because I you, no one should expect a ton of no. wins this season. This is this is this is a, a building year for the Pistons. Yeah, you want to see them improve as players, improve as NBA players. You want to see Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran mold as actual NBA pieces rather than just be the athletic freaks. So the Pistons don't have the pressure of needing to produce wins to produce things like that. Obviously, it's better for the fans when they see the Pistons win. Yeah. But as Pistons fans, all you can ask for them is to mold and get better as players. So the Pistons this year shouldn't be stressing themselves to put a certain amount of wins on the board. Yeah. They should just hope their young players can improve and mold into NBA players. Yeah. JB, I'm going to get your thoughts when we come back from break, but not before Spinney tells us about the butchery. Butch coming. The butch coming. Because the official meat supplier of the Woodward Sports Network is the butchery. Call 248-682-COWS. Yes, that's 248-682-COWS. Or move on over 
to thebutcherysl.com. Shipping included for Woodward Sports customers. The Butchery meets, eats, and treats. Sandwiches to die for. Wagyu meats and artisan breads inspired by the legend Chef Dave. Only the best for our meat-loving customers. An <laughs> old-school butcher shop with a new-school perspective. I want it. I I'm want telling it. you guys, you see it every Friday. We play you a video of us taste-testing this food. Best sandwich I've ever had in my life. Meat best, to me. Best burger I've ever had in my life. So go to the butcherysl.com and get our meat put in boxes and shipped to your door. Hell yeah. Woodward Sports is giving you another chance to sit front row. This time at the Detroit versus Green Bay game. Think you have the best Dan Campbell impression? Woodward Sports, let's go. Can you say man with the best of them? I got it. Here's what I need, man. I need you to trust me. I, I swear to God, I'm not a lunatic. I swear to you. Can you say, let's go for it on fourth down? Man, I got a plan. I swear to you. All I think about is you guys. That's all I think about, man. Are you a master motivator? That's all I think about is you guys. Show us in a video. Record your best Dan Campbell impression and post the video on Twitter or Instagram using hashtag Woodward Front Row. We'll select the best three impersonations of Motor City Dan Campbell and send you and a guest front row. So knock the dust off the old sweatpants, wipe some kneecaps, and enter today. <laughs> and as always, go Lions, man. I just need you to trust me. That's all. Please. I don't care if I got a one toe, two butt cheeks, and a, and a, and a rock. <laughs> Life is full of hard choices. We're here to make one of life's biggest decisions as simple as possible. My name is Christina Gennari, and for over 20 years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and sell homes. We cover all of Metro Detroit and more, from large luxury homes to starter homes. We will work hard to make sure that you get the home of your dreams. So if you're in the market today or even thinking about buying or selling in the future, make the obvious choice. Christina Gennari, the obvious choice in real estate. Visit us at soldchristina.com today. Spence yeah. spoke to you about meat. I did. I'm going to speak to you about Swiss. Psych! Not him, it's Swiss. Swiss Insurance Group. Did you guys know that one in six kids would develop a medical condition that makes them uninsurable? It's kind of crazy and sad. But Swiss Insurance can save you money on your auto and home, resulting in no out-of-pocket costs to insure your children, if that ever happens. Check with our guy, Mark, at Swiss Insurance, and make sure that your family's protected. Check it out. Check it, Check it out. out. Rip. Honestly, as a father, that is like kind of scary. What up, though? Welcome back to the Woodward Heavy. Oh, my gosh. I just caught that. What up, though? Welcome back to the Woodward Heavy. It's live at WoodwardSports.com. I'm your boy, Easy Jump, by my man, Spinmo Rex. What up, though? Yeah, young sus in the TV booth. JB Smooth with the ones and twos. And JB, has, for being an audio guy, you're pretty damn quiet today. I'm just sitting back here listening to bars from you guys. That's bars. it, man. All day. All day. Do you got any for us? You got any bullion bars? I don't got any bullion bars. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing better than you guys are spitting now, so. <laughs> what was the coldest bullion bar we had up here today? Uh, I think it's the one you said with the fofo. <laughs> that bullion. <boy>, uh. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember what it was either. I actually texted one to Ash. Yeah. Let's see what he says. Let's see what he says. How, how you feeling about the Pistons, though? Oh, I'm feeling good about the piston. I mean, we can't stop talking more about it. I mean, it's just so it feels so good to just talk positive about wins in the city of Detroit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And to go along with everything you guys said, Ivy, K, Boyan, they all had a night. Killian, I don't want to put too much pressure on the guy. Just know that you have your certain role. I know Ivy and Kate are going to go out there and ball out, but this doesn't need to put pressure on you to be that superstar of a point guard. Just know the jobs and roles that you're good at on the team and just, you know, flourish in that. Be positive in that. Yeah. The Pistons are only going to get better as the season goes on. Mm -hmm. They will show development in all the spots you want to see. I already talked about them molding Jalen Duran and Jaden Ivey from these freak athletes into NBA players. Yeah. That is something that the Pistons will need to do throughout the season. But it's going to be fun to watch. This team is going to be extremely fun to watch. So, And first of all, hit the Woodward Sports chat with your best boy on bar. I want to see a lit up and I want to see a hot 16 from somebody. All boy on bars. 100%. And then um, to a point I want to make too, and we kind of touched this with a guy, Ray Rout, that we had on the New England Patriots. And we were talking about like, what makes Bill Belichick great because he's had a lot of guys leave the organization and not replicate like what they were with the Patriots. And because Bill Belichick puts guys in positions to be great at what they're good at. I think Greg Popovich and the way that Young Suss was talking about the Euro players he, he grabs and I almost said grab took advantage of <laughs> all the Euro I'll players. I'll tell you, it gets dark when you watch that doc. <laughs> all right, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. But the, the, you know, the Euro players that he grabs and he finds yeah. what they're good at. I mean, 
Tim Duncan is arguably like one of the like the best to ever do it, right? Mm-hmm. What was his nickname? The, the big, big fundamental. fundamental. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Killian could be that. Like just as long as he can be the little fundamental. The little fundamental. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He's a little fundamental, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just put him in positions where he could be great. And what he's good at. I know it sounds funny to say, but yeah. like that's that's coaching. That's a coaching thing. And then hopefully Dwayne Casey continues to do that. And I hope Killian's not down on himself because again, I think you could win with him in that type of role. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, I didn't even make that comparison to him before. I I didn't put Killian in the same space as Tim Duncan, but look, he's a little fundamental. A little not, fundamental. Not the big one. Not the big just a little, one. Just a little, little baby fundamental. Yeah. He's a little fun. Maybe he doesn't have the mental yet. Yeah. We gotta put that the in. mental, yeah. <laughs> She's a cousin. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Pistons fans want to see that out of Killian. Pistons fans want to see Killian succeed at the right things. And like you said, people who hate on Killian this year or hate on Killian after that game are box score watchers. Yes. Because Pistons fans who watch the game, they see what he does on the court. Obviously, his first year, you were upset because you expected the pro comp of yeah. James Harden. You expected this this Frenchman to come in here. Oh, I will take the league by storm. I will put the baskets and do this. Tony Le Parker, you know. <laughs> but Pistons fans can see Killian's development is him nailing down the things he does great right now. See that. No, I don't go there. You can see yeah. Pistons fans. The Reddit audience wants us to tone down yeah. the sex jokes. Yeah. Be ha- I had I had a Tony Parker French one that I was that I was gonna get to, but no I can't. Yeah, Red, Reddit's on us for that one. Yeah. I, what did I say? I didn't say you no. Just, no, you good? Nailing down? No. Yeah. Tony Le Parker. Sure, I'll Mine go. was totally different. Mine was going to be yes. Tony Parker and Emmy Udoka teaming up. What that does to a team. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Nobody's <Yes>. safe. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's mom or wife uh, is safe. Uh, uh, they got to say they're chilling with Zach Wilson on the weekends. Oh but <laughs> I expect to see a step from Killian this year. Because they told us he's been working on his three-pointer. Yeah. You see, it, it is reworked. He reworked his whole jump shot. So hopefully, Killian Hayes can go out there and start knocking down some trays. We saw the same out of Isaiah Stewart. Pistons fans were told he's in the lab. He's doing all this. Look at him knocking down all these shots. He looked pretty good in preseason. And he went one for four last night. But he looked comfortable doing it. So the Pistons are going to expect that out of them. The Pistons need to get that out of them because to be on the court for extended periods of time in the NBA nowadays, you have to be able to knock down a three. That is just the facts. Yeah. An open three, you have to be able to hit it. So once Killian can do that comfortably, that will be a big jump for his... What's that? The facts? That will be a big jump for his development as a player. I don't take naps. (laughs) (laughs) Word, Drake? (laughs) The most random bar. Drink bars. Boomer Sports Chat lighting up with the phone number. Let's be in me too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whoa. I wasn't saying that one. Boomer Sports Chat asked for the, uh, us to open up the phone lines. Are, are, we, are we cool with that, JB? We got a guy, Scott, calling in as always. Oh, Scott's talking about Michigan football. We aren't talking about Michigan football, Scott. Well, I'll put him on real quick. Let me about Juwan Howard. Scott, you there? About time. It's about time. I agree, bro. I agree, bro. What, what do you What do you got to say, Scott? Let's hear it. Time for my snack. I called it. I called it, and I called it. Yeah, the phone I, number? Our number? <laughs> no, the game. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the Pistons were going to beat the Magic. I missed the point differential, but yeah, I called it. You did. <laughs> what, what were you most? What were your biggest takeaways you from that job? game? <laughs> <laughs> My biggest takeaways from that game would probably have to be Jaden Ivey being on the same point scoring average in his debut as Isaiah Thomas and all them greats that we've had come through Detroit. Yeah, I believe it was Jaden Ivey had the fourth most points scored for a rookie debut. I think I think Zeke had 31, 31. In, his, in his first Crazy. game. Like that is insane. Crazy. Thomas had 31. Yeah. yeah. Like that's awesome. What are you expect what are you expecting for Jaden Ivey this year? Scott? Absolute domination from the arc, honestly. His speed's going to open up everything for everybody like it did last night. Nobody expected Isaiah Stewart to take that three-point shot and nail it. 
Yeah. <laughs> Scott, before we let you go, man, I, I got to know, are, are you period I or period uh? Period I. Yeah, let's go, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling in, brother. I appreciate you. Just saying, why did you call the game this weekend? Michigan beats Michigan State 34 to 21. You know what? I'll I'll be okay if uh, Michigan State only holds them thirty-four. Yeah, me too. <laughs> if it's a ten-point game or uh, that's a period, ah! a thirteen-point game, that's all right. Uh, you know. Thanks, Scott. We appreciate, appreciate calling you in, buddy. calling in, Scott. You guys have a wonderful night, man. You, you do too, the brother. same, and we. He makes a good point because period Jaden odd, not, period, period odd, definitely over period. Uh, I but, thought he for sure he was a period odd. But I thought he was going to be a period odd. But you see I'm not judging. what yeah. Jaden Ivey can bring to this Detroit Pistons team, and that is he can unlock everything the outside track. of the arc for everyone else. Mm -hmm. With his ability, his quick first step, his relentless speed, his ability to get to the basket, make contested shots, get in the lane at will, that will give so many open shots to other players on this team. Whether it's Sadiq Bey, Boyan Bogdanovich, Kate Cunningham, Isaiah Stewart, Alec Burks, Isaiah Livers. These are all guys who can knock down those shots. So, Pistons fans will see a lot more drive and dish this year, obviously. Because we added a secondary ball handler, another ah, guy obviously. who can attack Period the rim obviously. in the Pistons uniform, in Jaden Ivey. So, I'm excited for the Pistons to see what they can do with a guy like that and help them unlock the swag on offense. I'm, I'm with the shits all day. <laughs> all day. Um, I, and, I, and here's one thing, too. Like, it's going to be some bad games as well. Yes, you know, for don't, sure. Don't expect it to be all like what last night was. Yeah. You know, I, I expect a lot of ugliness. I, we saw that the missile up last night. And I'm not, I'm not trying like, to bash anybody, but like, it's going to happen just because it's their rookie year. It's just because they're dealing with – I don't know how to make – of the situ what to make of the situation with Chet Holmgren and his injury. Because initially I was like, well, it's kind of a freak injury, whatever. But no, uh, our guy, Kool-Aid, does a podcast with um, – oh, man, I, I don't know why the name is escaping right now. I apologize. But nonetheless – Detroit Deuce? No. Rod Beard. I apologize. Oh, okay. I have no – I don't know how I forgot that one. But he had mentioned like – it's it's still like a different like <laughs> level of – it's still like a different level of basketball. So like you're, you're just making – I guess more aggressive movements even like be able to cover LeBron like yeah. he tried in the fast break. And For that's sure. why you land in a certain way. And like I was just gonna take these guys some time to develop. Definitely. And all of them. Except for, I don't know. Darren might look like he's ready right now. He does look pretty <laughs> ain't good. Gonna lie. He looks pretty period at. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> if you want to end up looking period at instead of period uh, <laughs> then you should head up Planet man. Fitness because as you know <laughs> you don't be a munch. we broadcast this show live from the Planet Fitness Studios in Birmingham. Planet Fitness is the home of the judgment free zone where you can work out in a non intimidating judgment free atmosphere. The gym that has always been known for being clean is now cleaner than ever as clean as a Boyan Bogdanovich three ball has tons of equipment a full body workout in just 30 minutes in the 30 minute circuit and all memberships include fitness training you get all of this for just ten dollars a month join in club or online at planetfitness.com and remember Woodward Sports will be broadcasting live from Planet Fitness on Ryan Road in Sterling Heights on Wednesday October 26th you can win prizes like Michigan versus MSU tickets and a free one year black card membership you can get a signed Darren McCarty jersey you can get a signed Braylon Edwards jersey you never know what's going to happen Make sure you come join us at Planet Fitness on October 26th, hey, <laughs> period at. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. When you need apparel, there's only one place to go. Big Frog in Novi. With no setup fees, no artwork fees, no minimum, and a 24-hour turnaround, you can have your whole team outfitted in no time. Embroidery, direct-to-garment, vinyl, and screen printing, Big Frog has it all in all the styles you want. So whether it's a sports team, fundraiser, school event, or corporate needs, Big Frog is your one-stop destination. Visit bigfrog.com slash novi or call 844-4-BIG-FROG. 
at Alta. Uptime. Matters. Alta equipment has everything you need to get the job done. Got a period ad project coming up? <laughs> Alta Ranch you covered. Make sure you give them a call today at 844 go to Alta. Again, that's 844 go to Alta. Alta equipment where Uptime. Matters. <laughs> What up, y'all? Welcome back to the Woodward Heavyweights. <laughs> Live on WoodSports.com. <laughs> Monday through Friday, 5 to 7. We're here every day, all right? So I'm, I'm easy. It's my guy, Spin More Rex. You guys, if you guys are new here, make sure you hit the like button, get cozy, and get ready to get depressed. We're about to talk some Detroit Lions. Thanks. All right. Uh, Aaron Glenn spoke with the media today. He did. And Was he, it period A or period of? Period A, Aaron Glenn yeah. spoke, <laughs> spoke with the media today. And, uh... He was asked about the, the benching of uh, Amon Ra, Amon Ra, Amani Awarie. Yes. And he said it, sometimes something needed to be done to send a message to the team that you, you're here to compete. For sure. This league, you're competing for everything. Yeah. And it's true. It's, I mean, it, the NFL is not the NBA. Yeah. Your contract's not guaranteed. You can get period cut any time period at. Do we have a, oh, a soundbite for that one? Do you have, yeah, do you have oh, the yeah. video, Aaron Glenn? Yeah, roll Listen, that real yeah, quick. Yeah, run that. DJ, spin that ish. Right, and I think it's important that you do that as far as a team because now it sends a message to everybody, um, offense, defense, that, man, listen, this, this game is about competing at the highest level every time, and you have to earn your keep in this league. Um, and there's no free passes. And just with Dan being confident to make that decision, um, I think it really sent the message. I really do. Yeah, and he's right. He's right. That is a message that – no one is safe. Message. That is a message. That period. Eh, no one is safe. Period a guy eh. like Amani Omowarie, who was our best defensive player last year, who led the team in interceptions, who had a breakout year, came out this I don't year. Know breakout now. Came out this year and stunk it up. Did not play well. Got a lot of penalties called against him. So the Detroit Lions sat him down and said, "Sorry, you got to take a seat." Dan Campbell going forward saying that that is not acceptable, saying he will not allow that to happen. Jerry Jacobs waiting in the wings, waiting to come forward and be a guy on that defense that can start. So Pitts, or Lions fans can take a little bit from that, that they're being held accountable, that this coaching staff is holding their players accountable for their play on the field, and it doesn't matter who you are. If you're not performing, you're going to get sat down. We might need to see more of that. I mean, we might need to see more of that from the Lions. I personally want to see more of that from the Lions. Yeah. Making guys hold themselves accountable for their play on the field. The Lions have never been a great team of accountability or a great team of keeping their their players regimented until Matt Patricia got here and then he did it too much. He said, if you do anything, you blink at me, you're gone. You're going somewhere else. So, point blank, period, ugh. They, they, yeah. They need, they, <laughs> he froze. They need a little bit more of yeah. that. But holding your players accountable is never do, do, do. a bad thing. <laughs> so, Lions, yeah. Lions fans can at least say, at least they're pushing the guys. Lions fans can be happy that this franchise is at least holding people accountable for lack of performance. 100%. Uh, a couple couple good comments in the Wilbur Sports chat. One that actually had me laugh a little bit is that King Horace says, uh, <laughs> after he sat him down and said, you have to earn your keep in this league. That's why I'm a dead man walking. <laughs> Shout out to King, <laughs> King Horace in the Wilbur Sports chat. That's, That's a, a great quote. Um, <laughs> Bruce Betterly actually kind of brings up a good point, too. They actually would put in question, you know, his methods. Why the hell is it Brocker sitting down? <laughs> Sid Brocker's down somewhere. But, hey, maybe he's doing his – I don't know what the hell he's doing out there, to be honest. I haven't kept his eye. But this is what you guys are asking for, right? Yes. From from Seattle on, or maybe even before then. You People want to say, we need some kind of change. Yes. They gave you that in the Patriots game. That's why – we, we – but they did. They, they did. They sat Amani. They sat Juju. They were the whole different lineup. I sat Sean Elliott, who was one of our best players. They got, got you two punts. One of the Lions' best players. Two. Two for one. Yeah, they did. They did. Well, he got benched. The other guys, like, got sat sat. Like, didn't even dress. Yes. DMPs. You know what I'm saying? Coach's decision. Like, it was a, and it, it sucked. Amani came out, and he said it sucked. And, he, and, and I think he understands it, too. He knows he's been playing bad. 
and maybe he just needs a nice like little reset. Yeah, the Lions need to do more of that. The Lions need to make more changes if Lions fans expect them to have this workout at all. If Lions fans want this Ew, team out. to get better. <laughs> The Lions, as a franchise, need to look at what they're doing eternally and make some changes. Whether that is in their defensive scheme, whether that is in their personnel, something needs to change because it's not working for them right now. And they need to go forward and make these changes. It's not just going to happen. It's not just going to fall in your lap. They need to go out there and do something drastic to make a change on defense if they want anything to happen. Because this defense has looked god-awful. I've said it multiple times. Their best performer is a sixth-round rookie. Their most consistent player is a sixth-round rookie in Malcolm Rodriguez. As much as you and I have propped him up and said he's going to be a great player, we didn't expect him to perform this well, but mm-hmm. it is great to see. Everyone else is just so bad around him. He makes it, it is, look better. It's partially that. Yeah. It's partially that no one else is doing anything on this defense. So the Lions as a franchise and Dan Campbell and his coaching staff need to go out there and make some changes mm-hmm. before they try to sell us anything else. Yeah. And, I, and honestly, I want to provide that false hope for you guys. All right. Because I'm, I'm going to give you like this exact quote from Amani. Easy. Noted snake oil merchant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Before I get to that point, I just want to give you this quote from Amani because I, I found it, I guess, uh, good news, I guess. Because in situations like that, it can go really, really bad or go really, really good. Um, you had a situation, I guess, with Robbie Anderson, as an example, where it went really, really bad. Dude left midfield. We had a video we can't play on what was sports. I don't know what was going on in that parking lot. But he's gone. You know, trade to the Cardinals. A situation like this, Amani Warrior, his exact quote from the interview today was, like I said, just a bump in the road, just adversity testing me that you can't take anything for granted, and that was good. I need that reflection. It, this coaching staff has this – they have these guys. Even though like, we're losing, they still have, like, their ear. They're still taking, like, their word to heart. And I, I guess it's a good sign, I mm-hmm. should say. Another good sign, too, is, like, you guys wanted this. This, this is where I'm selling you guys that snake oil, all right? You, you guys wanted these changes. You got those changes. In that same game, you had that defense hold the page just to 22 points. Was it Bailey Zappi? Sure. You know, I, I'll – Yeah. You know, not the greatest. Did he go out and score 30-plus p- points against the Browns on the road the following week? Yeah. Is it, is it being reported now that he may take over as a starting quarterback over Mac Jones? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think there's like – and, again, that's a game where he had five DBs go down. Like, there's still stuff here, and it's our fault. I'll take – I'll pick full accountability for this. Not fully you, Spinny, but my fault. Ryan Armani's fault. Adam's fault. And the national media, too, for kind of gassing you guys up a bit there. We, we did. But this, much like the Pistons this year, we have to just look for the growth in these guys. We, and I, I would say that week against the Patriots, although we took a loss, on the defensive side, you got a lot of those changes that we asked for. And what I could ask for now is some wins. I, I mean, we want them, you know what I'm saying? But, like, it's a tough task. That's, I, I've said it multiple times. It's a tough times. ask and task. The improvements – were there. They held them out of the end zone at least. Six of their scoring drives. Their six scoring drives, some of them were field goals. They had them kick two punts at least, a worse offense led by a rookie quarterback. But the Lions need to do more still. If they want to be a better team, if they want this defense to compete, they have to change something. They have to go out there. They have to stop settling for moral victories. Stop settling for almost. I need to see Aiden in a second passer's move. You need Aiden to get better. You need the Lions as a whole to get better. The coaches need to take it upon themselves that maybe we're not doing enough. Yeah. If Aiden Hutchinson is consistently going to his bull rush over and over and over and not getting any results, that makes me think the coaching staff has not addressed it. Because Aiden Hutchinson, to me, doesn't feel like a guy that is going to blatantly ignore what his coaches tell him. So what I see is the Lions coaching staff not addressing the problems in this young man's start of his career. And you need to do that as coaches. That is your job, is to make the players better, is to help the players succeed in situations. You, I mean, obviously we're not at the pro level of professional football or any like level close to collegiate or what Aiden is and was, but like... 
I know that we've been told things by coaches and we went ahead and did this, the stuff we like root back to when we're struggling out there. I think that's what's going on with Aiden because he is so young in his career. Like when you're struggling, you try and go back to like what you thought worked, not like what worked. I gave you guys my story of like I wanted to get the quarterback and instead of like holding down my gap and, and, and closing out the edge or sealing off the edge. I apologize. And I, I think that's what Aiden's going through right now. I hope that's what he's going through. I don't want to fully blame coaching, but I mean we're gonna see. You know, it's it's not out of the cards. But uh, before we do so, Spinny, can you tell us about Big Frog? Of course I can tell you about Big Frog because you can get a free Woodward Sports t-shirt. That's right, a free Woodward Sports t-shirt for all month ski. at Big Frog in Novi. Just stop in, tell them we sent you, and they will print you out one on the spot. Go check them out at Big Frog in Novi or visit them online at BigFrog.com slash Novi. We are the Woodward Heavyweights. We'll be right back. For a limited time only, all new burgers and loaded fries at Big Boy. It's not a Slim Jim, it's the Big Jim. The chili cheese is such a tease. Guess what else is new? The bacon blue. How about upgrading those fries? Chili cheese fries, baked potato fries, nacho fries, what will it be? Satisfy those taste buds at Big Boy. My name is Lee. I've lost 35 pounds on the Custom Health Center program. So the three biggest benefits that I've gotten from this, uh, this program has been, I'm not snoring anymore, I have a lot of energy, uh, it's great, and oh by the way, look at this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm... Call us at 844-789-THIN or visit customhealthcenters.com for a free consultation and get started for as little as $5 a day. Listen, man, if you don't want to be period out, period out, or any of the sorts, <laughs> you want to sit front row with your significant other at the Detroit Lions game versus the Green Bay Packers. And it's easy to do. You just got a person named me, Dan Campbell. Not, not whatever accent I'm doing. I'm, I suck. I said, I'm not going to win the tickets. I'm still submitting my video. <laughs> Here you but go. you guys, yeah, you, that's easy competition for you. Literally, front row. If they get it together, you'll be able to watch it. The Detroit Lions versus the Green Bay Packers. All you have to do is make a video impersonating Dan Campbell and post it on Instagram, Twitter. Make sure you tag Woodward Sports and use the hashtag Woodward Front Row. And you have to be following to qualify. Don't no, try no slick stuff, all right? Do so, and I hope to see you there, and I hope you take me, honestly. Period. Huh? Period. Up. Period. Up. <laughs> I got to say something, man. The, uh, was it the, the, the commercial, the health guy, Kyle? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's like a living embodiment of like Jerry from uh from uh Rick, Rick and Morty. Morty. Yeah. Morty. Like, that's, yeah. that's what he reminded me of. <laughs> In the commercial, like laughing at his own joke. I am sorry. What up though? Welcome back to World Heavy Ways Live from Sports.com. I'm your boy Easy Joe by my man Spin More Rex. What up though? Yeah, young Sus in the T D move. JB Smooth the one to twos. We're closing out the show. Thank you guys for tapping in with us. If you haven't already, hit that like button, be a friend, tell a friend. JB, you've been quiet all show. I know you're a degenerate gambler. Okay. I don't know, I don't know if your wife knew that. And I apologize if I snitched on you a little bit. I saw you trying to put in those bets, those lines before before game time tonight. What's going on tonight? What, what, what are we what are we making the money at? I'm taking an over on both the NBA games tonight, and I got a couple prop bets going. But of course, I'm taking an under for Thursday night football. Always got to take the under the national games. What, what's the prop bets uh, tonight? Uh, it was Anthony D. Davis on points, 24 and a half. I think uh, P.J. Tucker, over five and a half points, one three-point made, you know. Easy ones. Trying to make that easy money. Easy, baby. Any NFL props? Uh, I don't think I got any on the NFL props. I'm a little nervous about this Thursday night football. Thursday night football, man. It's, you never know what to expect. That's why I don't. I try to avoid starting all my fancy players. I don't. What First and foremost, it happened one time, actually. My guy Nick Leach benefited from it. But you don't take the over. And Thursday night games, especially Monday night games, yeah, because you're looking at like kind of like even weeks at that point. You know, same between like the from Sunday to Monday. For sure. On a Thursday, guys are banged up. They're nursing injuries. Like if you played high school football, you've woke up feeling like, damn, like what did I get this bruise? Why do I feel this way? This is like at the pro level. Like these guys on Thursdays, like there's just no way they're ready to like go out there and do the same stuff over and over again. Like and that's why you get those horrid performances. 
I think the NFL got to get it. I know, obviously, it's not going to happen now. They signed a big contract with Amazon. But everybody hates Thursday night football. Yeah, the players hate Thursday Just night scrap football. It, bro. The owners hate. The owners don't because they get more money. Yeah, the NFL doesn't because it gets more money. Roger Goodell doesn't because he gets more money and he's an evil person, anyways. But period. Uh. Period. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Goodell definitely. Period. Uh. But. <laughs> Thursday Night Football is not only a terrible product, it's so tough for these guys. Imagine playing on Sunday and then having to play in four days. Yeah. You got to go right back out there on the grid. And they're worried, player safety, player safety. We're all worried about that. I know. But we're going to put guys back out there on four days rest? Yeah. Give me a break, Raj. You're a loser, period. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) It's. I don't want to hear about player safety when obvious money grabs like that are still out there. It's so funny because I think you actually kind of look like a male version of, of the period on girl. Like if you want to shave your beard. Period on. Ah, period on. <laughs> yeah. Period on. Ah, period on. <laughs> Someone told me she, That's got, be she got a record deal. Actually, did she get a record? You would know, sus. Uh, I believe she does have a record deal. I just don't know to where. How, bro? She's like, I don't even care. She, dude, bug. they they signed a robot rapper, an AI rapper. Did you did oh, you guys see that like months man. ago? I did. And I then they and then they dropped them because he used the uh, he used the N word, and they were like, "Well, can robots use the N word?" And <laughs> how do you drop an AI rapper? I don't understand that. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys say, JB? So, <laughs> can the AI robot use the N word? <laughs> that would have made iRobot a better movie. Whoa! <laughs> Will Smith just hashtag clothes on chill out over Will there, Smith bro. just starts firing on him. <laughs> oh, that's the whole. That's why the war starts. Yeah, that's yeah. why the war starts. I, I don't think an AI rapper can uh, yeah. use the N word. That, that should be in this program. They're like, boy, <laughs> yeah. the words of that. <laughs> Of that type. I will what the say, wrong? I think it's perfect, Rob. What did I do wrong? I will say the bar was hard, though. The bar, Go the ahead bar and say was it, hard, Chris. though. What's yeah, yeah, the, the bar? The robot yeah. bar? It said, yeah, it said, I don't, I don't see you people like we playing hockey. Oh, that's a bar. Oh, I was seeing people. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I don't see you people? No, yeah. I was seeing people. Like putting a C, like Captain. Oh, that's not even that hard. No. no. No, it was easy, had it right. It was. I don't see you people. Like oh, you're, you're saying you people was oh, okay. Yeah. Engines. What do you mean you yeah. people? I thought you meant like I was seeing people like no. we're playing hot. What do you mean you people? I, that's a, what a woke culture, man. A robot. Yeah. I guess it depends who made the robot. Was I don't want to take credit yeah, for it. That's true. Yeah, who robot. made the robot? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's a white guy imagine. made the robot, yeah, we gotta yeah. cancel the robot. Yeah, the, robot, the white guy's can't. Yeah, because he's profiting up the robot. I'll get away with it, finally. <laughs> yeah. I got in my robot. I got a robot. I'm so close. <laughs> Cops his bedroom. A million dollars. It took millions of dollars to make this AI robot, so they just spent millions of dollars on this loophole. Yeah. Hey, hey, we clomp open that Gmail, he dropped down the middle of Walgreens. He's like, no! <laughs> that is such like, that's such like a That's such like a robot. That'd be a funny skit, like rich white guys, like, Yes, yeah, so we finally designed a robot so we can have it say the N-word for us instead. <laughs> and meanwhile, we find out Kanye West is a robot this yeah, whole time. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. You know what's crazy? He made that song, uh, Black Skinheads. Didn't he? Yeah. Was that? Yeah. yeah. Who would have known? Who would have known? The signs were there the whole time. Signs were there. Okay. Were always... how, did, how do we not see this coming? Kanye <laughs> off the meds now. I was like, the Pete Davidson thing, have you seen that? No. Where he's going off. He's like, yeah, I'm off the meds. This is the real me. Well, get back on him. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, being mentally unhealthy is not something to brag about. <laughs> Imagine he's doing this because this whole time he's thought Pete Davidson was Jewish. <laughs> he's not. <laughs> Jeez. Who knows what Pete Dude, Davidson is? It's so has. bad. It's the, bank, <laughs> the bank told him he can't bank anymore. Yeah. Like, you seriously pissed off that, that demo guy? Like I forget who... Uh, Oh, Hannibal Burris in one of the rows said that about Pete Davidson. He's like, I don't know what you are, but I'm like, he's like, you got a vague ass face. <laughs> he, th- Pete Davidson? Yeah. He's 100%. He's he looks like, like a gargoyle. Yeah. That's actually good. The skinny one? Yeah. Yeah, he does. That show was hype. Yeah. I, was, I was confused too, because at first I was like, go, go Pete, because he's knocking down all these like fine, yeah. fine celebrities. I, don't get I was like, it's a light skinned yeah. brother getting it. And I'm like, oh, he's not. Oh. No. I thought he was mixed. <laughs> he's not. 
He's weird looking. Yeah. That vague. He's vague. He's, <laughs> yeah. weird. he's very weird. Yeah. Know, I don't. I don't know where to pin. And he's from New York too. And New York's like the ultimate mixing pot. Yeah. So he can be anything. <laughs> you don't know what's running around in New York. That's why they can't cancel me. Cause you don't know what I am. I don't know what I am. I never met my dad. No, I'm joking. I'm playing. <laughs> well, that's where we're gonna end. It. We appreciate everyone for tuning in, hey, joining yeah. us on the Woodward Sports. Dot com. Hit the like button if you know your father. Hit the <laughs> or don't. <laughs> Tap in Monday through Friday. Or you know no, where to find us. Wilmersports.com, 5 to 7. It's like Portal a distress signal. Like, no, the here. one, the only. Speak easy. Young sus holding down in the TD booth. Our boy JB Smooth on the ones and twos. I am Spencer Raster. We are the Wilmer Heavyweights. Love you, Dad. Peace. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs>